UCLA taking the field on their home turf as the Rose Bowl has been the home to the Bruins since 1982. And shared the college game for so many years with USC, but this has definitely been a great home for them. Now, will it be a, a kind one on this Saturday night, or will the Cougars look for a second consecutive win on the road as Washington State comes in with so much momentum? A winning rep as opposed to UCLA at two and three. And Baldy was said it last Saturday night in Palo Alto. Tough to beat these weather conditions for a kick on a Saturday night. You mean the moon up above and perfect temperatures and no wind and you know it's it's awesome. It's uh, and a perfect pitch to play on here at the Rose Bowl. It is one of the great settings in college football. Jeff Locke who has had his problems when it comes to placements will be their kickoff man their putter as well but there's a new place kicker who just joined the team a couple of weeks ago we'll be talking about that young man out of Fullerton High School Tyler Gonzalez in just a few minutes Marcus Manson going back deep along with Isaiah Barton the twosome for the Cougars the three and one Washington State Cougars so here we go we are ready in Pasadena. And it's good to have you with us at the Rose Bowl. Locke, what he does well, kicks it deep. Barton, one and two, about five, six yards into the end zone, but he'll keep it right there. So Marshall Lobustall, man, he is the focal point. The fifth year senior, not that many starts overall, but he did start against the Bruins in 2009. Very efficient number since taking over midway through the opening Saturday of the season when Jeff Toole went down. And Jeff Toole is in pads for the first time since he broke his clavicle. He fractured it in the opening September 3rd. So in relief if needed. Out of the gun. And we'll see it frequently. It's rare when they get under center. Run it early. Man, the Bruins on top of the situation. As they get Carl Winston, an early touch. Our KFC starting lineup, we just saw the starting quarterback, and Guerra, the right guard, Brian, he's a four-year senior starter. Yeah, and he kind of anchors that front, and then... The speed on this offense in a passing offense is Marquise Wilson on the outside. Caught the winning touchdown last week at, at Colorado. They have three wide receivers with 19 or more catches. Ton of time and a first down. Well thrown by Lobustall going to Isaiah Barton, the senior from Westchester High School here in Los Angeles. And UCLA has got to get pressure on Lobustall. Starts with Dayton Jones. A guy that they need more pressure up front from. Breaking tackles. Winston does a good job just to get three out of it from the 32 to the 35 as we continue with the KFC starting 11. They're really injured in the back end, though. Hester starts at it starting for their best cover corner, Sheldon Price. Yeah, and Tony Dye, you know, their senior safety is out, so in his place is Tevin McDonald. Two in the backfield, both Galvin and Winston. On a second and long, keep it on the ground and a good decision with a stutter step as Galvin is forced out, the redshirt freshman from Berkeley. And all Paul Wolf talked about this week when we spoke with him a couple of times is first downs. We want to get first downs. You can see they don't they don't huddle up. They do everything at the line of scrimmage. They're up tempo. They would love at the end of today, Joel, to have about 80 plays. They had 49 at the half at Colorado last week, so they were efficient offensively with what they did. Had to come from behind, though. Now on a third and short. Ton at the time, and in the flat, it's Winston. Does he get it? Yes, I believe by a yard, the 43. Carl Winston, junior from Harbor City, California, here in Southern California. On the defense, number 89. A mistake already. Automatic first That's down. Nate Chandler, the senior from San Diego. Well, that was the check down that time to Carl Winston. What you do, what you say here in this offense is touchdown to check down. And if they're covering the receivers down the field, don't be afraid to throw it to one of his fleet-footed backs to pick up a first down. Well, UCLA, the third fewest in the Pac-12, and then the other extreme, 10 penalties better than 100 yards despite the win last week at Colorado and they almost beat themselves too often last week with mistakes. 
And that was for the Washington State Cougars. So they move it down inside the UCLA 45. It just noses inside the 43. A first down for Washington State on a drive that started at their own 20. And in the flat, out of the reach, no. Good grab, but it may have been better off had he dropped the ball. Loss of about five for Galvin. And a good open field stop for UCLA. Making the play on the outside, it was Tevin McDonald. We'd like to welcome those of you that have been watching the Baylor Bears matchup tonight. Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. A loss of five makes it second and 15. Opening drive of the game for the Washington State Cougars. Counter action for Calvin and a nice lane over to the right side. He's got the first down. Some real speed to the outside. I mean, this is not a big guy, Joel. We saw him before the game, but you're going to see just, you know, they're just going to come around to the outside right here. And on that play, you got a good job by the third tackle that's in there. Playing the tight end position, which really secured the end of the line of scrimmage. That big guy also, John Fullington, got out the left guard on the pull. So it's a first down all the way to the UCLA 30. game doesn't work that time loss of three just about four Chandler in the backfield for UCLA an easy day for the Baylor Bears as they had their way at home winning 49 to 26 over Iowa State they have no problem scoring points right you know last week uh, you know the defense let them down a little bit but Art Bryles doing a good job there in Waco second and long now for Lobostal and the Cougars offense they'll spread it out two to each side show the blitz it's picked up on the outside and a little dump off going the right way was Galvin and he's close they brought the pressure Brian from the opposite side and a good read by Lobestall absolutely right Joel you're seeing the field very well early in this game UCLA is going to come with the pressure Tevin McDonald's from the safety right here they have the perfect play on they're going to go opposite here to Galvin again speed on the outside this is a good opening drive kind of mixing it up Short passes, a little bit of a run, and then the check down to Galvin on the outside. Don't forget what Stanford did last week against UCLA. They went 99 yards for a touchdown on their first possession. On third and short, little slant. Boy, they're playing off a big cushion. Tevin McDonald gets there, and it's a first down with a flag down at the end of the play to the 14. So the completion to Bobby Ratliff and they like all their wide receivers Ratliff is a true freshman from Etiwanda here in Southern California oh, they'll throw to six or seven or eight guys just keep rotating them through keeping them fresh personal foul on the defense leading with the helmet number 43 and to the goal automatic first down now, Tevin McDonald's beat on the play by Ratliff, and there it is. There's the play they're talking about. It is. It's helmet to helmet hit. It's Dietrich Riley. He's in the starting lineup due to the injury to Dalton Hilliard. They're missing Price, Hilliard, Tony Dye doesn't start, so we're missing three starters in the secondary. The back end is hurting for UCLA, and it shows. First and goal to the seven. Play fake, low throw, trying to get it to Karstetter, the senior from Spokane. He's working on the outside against Aaron Hester. He's their senior. Here he is. You can see these guys are all in a track stance. Beats him inside. It's actually, that's him where he has to throw. It's the only spot was low. Maybe he could have gotten a hand scooped underneath it just a little bit, but good coach by Hester that time. Now trips up top on the short side. Fourth best in the Pac-12, 11, 16 times getting into the end zone. Delay, Winston, man, a collaboration. But it was Sean Westgate, the first one to meet him and hold him up. Now third and goal. Westgate's playing with a broken hand. You can see the big 
pile he's got on the right hand. That is not easy to tackle with. Now he's got helmet issues. There it is. His <laughs> helmet just got knocked right off. And the back initiated that contact. That's a good no call. He got a little cut on the eye. He got the broken hand. And now Eric Kendricks takes over. A redshirt freshman. So we're talking about the back end for UCLA. And this is a crucial third down early. Third and goal outside of the five. Washington State does not shift the motion. They line up and play. UCLA showing blitz up the middle. Out on the edge, it's Galvin. He won't get there. The combination of Hester on that side along with Laramore. UCLA came with some pressure on it. They had the right play. You're going to get the back out of the backfield here. Not bad. Picked up pretty good. Nice read by Lobestall. Now, can you tackle in the open field? It's huge today. Hester along with Laramore get the guy down. Red zone defense wins for UCLA right there. Keep Washington State out of the end zone. Even though they gave up a lot of yards in a big drive, they keep them from the touchdown. Andrew Fernie, 5 of 5 so far this season. Sophomore from Burlington, Washington, with a 21-yard field goal try in the opening possession of the game for the Cougars. And the chip shot is good. So Washington State losing to the Rose Bowl last year by 14 points has the early advantage on the Bruins. An impressive start offensively for the Cougars. They lead it 3 to nothing. Pac-12 College Football Saturday presented by KFC Popcorn Chicken. Today tastes so good. Also brought to you in part by Verizon, America's largest and most reliable wireless network. And by Buick, see real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. Welcome back to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena as the UCLA Bruins are ready to get it for the first time tonight. Sending back Derek Coleman along with their kick return specialist, Josh Smith, one of the better ones of the Pac-12, former Colorado Buffalo, and a short one is going to be picked up at the 10 by Smith. Return right, and he's got an alley, but he's tripped up crossing the 18. Outstanding play for Washington State in particular. Going low was Brandon Golden, well, the defensive back. So now it is Richard Brijo and the Bruins. And, and let's remember, Brio has positive thoughts whenever he sees Washington State. His first career start last year came against the Cougars. And it was right here. And because it's now the Pac-12, there's a little scheduling quirk where Washington State had to come here to Pasadena for the second year in a row. So yes, very familiar here. Big game by Brio a year ago. Even though they ran for 437 yards last year, he made some key throws. UCLA and one of the officials unfortunately down on the sideline yeah those guys get in the middle of some of that some of the fray every once in a while as well not going to be long before they start putting on some pass themselves the way they get hit sometimes he's a back judge he's going to be tended to on the Cougars sideline William Robinson the back judge They'll go ahead and play with six. They'll adjust. Normally seven officials covering the field. They'll go to six right now until we'll see what happens to William Robinson. So UCLA coming off a loss at Stanford. The last time they were at home, they lost decisively to the Texas Longhorns. Their winning conference play came on the road in Corvallis, Oregon against Oregon State. Brijo. Throwing on first down. Man, it's complete. He goes to Randall Carroll, the junior from here in Los Angeles. As we look at the KFC starting lineup for the Bruins, and it's Mike Harris, the right tackle, who they look for a big game, another four year starter. They got to play good up. Mike Harris is a senior. They got to be more physical. Jonathan Franklin coming off that 216 yard performance here against the Cougars a year ago, looks for a big game tonight. Long drives against UCLA last week, and that's the way it started. Again tonight, Van Franklin belted right at the line of scrimmage. Boy, Lorenzi had a great game for them as we look at the KFC starting 11. Uh, Anthony Lorenzi on the stop there for the Cougars. He's up front with Travis Long, who's maybe coming off his best game as a Cougar. 29th start tonight, but he was active all over that field in the comeback win 
against Colorado. Look in the middle, Alex Hoffman Ellis was the Pac-12 defensive player of the, of the week last week with 14 tackles. And in the back end, we'll take a look at Daniel Simmons tonight. We matched up against some receivers much bigger than him. We'll see how he plays. Brio, the Bruins need a little less than three. Launch point, changing it to overthrowing his man on the sideline. Good coverage by Simmons as he went for Josh Smith. So three and out for UCLA and another positive start for Washington State. Because great coverage by Simmons. And he's going to get tested tonight. It's a shorter guy, five foot ten, but really good coverage, sticky coverage that time. Only a great throw was going to beat it. So Washington State here forces a quick three and out after the long drive for a field goal. It'll be Jeff Locke punting under the way. They had a fair catch called for as it's taken in back deep at about the 30 yard line for the Cougars. So Washington State up by three. They get it when we come back. An early lead for Washington State as they get the football back. Time for our Bank of the West Pac-12 Players of the Week, Defensive Player of the Week. We just talked about Alex Hoffman Ellis out of Hamilton High School here in Southern California, right here in L.A. Arizona State junior wide receiver Jamal Miles returned to punt for 78 yards and a score in the win for the Sun Devils last week. And what about the numbers? True. Matt Barkley. Man, oh, man. That's all right. <laughs> Congratulations to those, those three. They deserve it. Good quarterbacks in this conference. Galvin goes one way, the ball goes the other way, and breaking a tackle and a nice play design as it's complete for a first down to Marquise Wilson across the 40 out to the 43 as we check in with Jim Knox. Knoxie. Joel, the back judge, William Robinson, on the training table right now, took off his sock and shoe. They're looking at his left calf. What's going on here? He told me he thinks he's cramping up. They're going to check it out a little bit. You got to hydrate, man. Not only a player, <laughs> but a referee, Bolt. You got to hydrate, man. You two down there, Jim, now. All right. I'm ready. Get yourself a little Gatorade. That's the problem, Jim. We know you're ready. <laughs> Put me in, coach. From the 43, it's a first down for the Cougars. Little jet sweep action. Across the 44 to the 45, it's Henry Eady, who is back on the punt, a late add for the Cougars. And the game plan for Washington State includes tackling well. Last year, gave up 437 yards rushing to UCLA. You should see the tempo right now. No huddle at the line of scrimmage. They want to run a lot of plays. And then how they play the ball in the air against those mismatches that Jim Knox talked about before the game may determine the outcome of the game. They spread the Bruins out once again on second and long. <laughs> they spread out every play, Joel. They, they've got four wides. That's their offense. No press coverage from UCLA like you see from Washington State. They give to a bigger back, and that is Laquan Metz, senior from Redmond, Washington. And his best run last year, in fact, came at the Rose Bowl against UCLA. Now, I said in the opening drive by Washington State, Joel, that they're all about first downs. And they got six first downs in that opening drive. This is the third down play. UCLA has got to figure out a way to stop them here and limit these first downs. Because they're chewing up the time of possession and playing keep away right now. Keep Mitch in the backfield. Trips up top of the wide side of the field. Lobestall changing the play at the line. Getting them in the right formation. Five rush for UCLA. They finally get some pressure. It's complete, but they don't have enough for the first down. Going underneath. He hit his wide out on that side. Or make it done with a tight end who was dropped by Kendricks right away. And it was Wilson. With E6, 988. Marquise Wilson, second grab of the night. And their very best. But that's a trap play there, Joel. They forced the ball out of Lobestall's hands, and they made the tackle. And that's the key to, to UCLA tonight. Can they tackle the catch? Because they're going to throw the ball a lot. Limiting the yards after the catch is UCLA's key tonight. Dan Wagner into punter to away as Taylor Embry waits back deep for UCLA. End over end, fair catch, which they needed last week, and he knows all about it at Stanford. He's heard enough. So when we return, UCLA with it for a second time offensively, down by three.
welcome back on a magnificent night in Pasadena. Joel Myers along with Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox. Pac-12 conference standings. Well, everything according to form today. Stanton, an easy winner, 48 to 7. Arizona State also winning on the road, so they're 3 and 0 in the South. Arizona losing at Oregon State. Tough year for those cats. Uh, Oregon doing a number on Cal on Thursday. So the Oregon Ducks also still undefeated in conference play. No shocks in the last game of the night right here at the Rose Bowl. UCLA and Washington State and the Cougars up early by three on a 21 yard field goal on their opening possession by Andrew Fernie. Now Brio out of the gun in the flat and nothing doing for Jordan James in fact a loss of about a yard Alex Hoffman Ellis defensive player of the week in the Pac-12. What a year he is starting to put together. First and ten line brought to you by Russell Athletic. And the coaches told us about Hoffman Ellis, just a great feel for the game, a smart kid. Right, all three linebackers, really, Joel. You know, you look at uh, in the middle, Mizell, C.J. Mizell, uh, transfer from Florida State, along with Sakopi Kafuze. I mean, the three of them are very, very active, and they play off each other real well. Second and long. Look at him. Here's all three linebackers right here in the middle. Cracking it across the 15. It's Jonathan Franklin. So well, UCLA ran it for better than 400 last year against this team, Brian. Their game plan this year. Well, here it is. I mean, their offense line's got to play well, all right, to be able to protect uh, the quarterback here. But they've got to minimize the the protection for Washington State. They got to get after Lobestone. And then they can't let special teams beat them. We saw them almost incapable of even kicking an extra point last week at Stanford, Joel. We'll see if they can convert a third and five here. Field position has not been kind to the Bruins. Starting back at their own 10 on this possession. First time they had it, it was at the 20. Brejo, with the heat coming, gets it off in time and overshoots his intended target. So it was available for Shaq Evans, but too tall. I think Rick Neuheisel is telling his quarterback just to settle down. Washington State came with a late safety blitz trying to get a little extra pressure on Brio. He actually hits him there low. But you see that ball is behind Shaq Evans. Tight man-to-man -man coverage all day long by Washington State. They've got to beat it. Henry D. Waiting back deep with the fair catch. Gathers it in cleanly and great field position on the exchange for Washington State as they're going to have it at their own 38. Best to start a drive on their third try tonight. Next weekend, another great day of college football Saturday. It all starts on FX. College football game of the week. Baylor Bears taking on the 25th ranked Texas A&M Aggies. The Battle of the Brazos at Central Florida is going to be at SMU Conference USA play. And we are going to wrap it up in Lubbock. Be down there for the Red Raiders. Texas Tech going up against the 5-0 K-State Wildcats over their win today, after their win today over Missouri. The Silver Fox, Bill Snyder, turning it around in Manhattan. So they win it 24-17 over the Tigers. K-State is one of the nice stories. As they give it to the big back, Mitz, and he breaks tackles all the way across the midfield stripe. A first down. So they have mixed up Galvin Winston, now Mitz in the last two series. Well, LeGuan is right here. You see a broken tackle right at the line of scrimmage. And I said that Westgate's playing with a broken hand. You can see he's got a big club on the right hand, and he can't really get off blocks, and they ran right at him on that play. Trading places. UCLA ran it against them last year. The Cougars of Washington State, they're running it early. And now, quick one, it's Marquise Wilson. He's out of bounds, but that's like a running play. It's such a high percentage play, and he's got another first down inside the 40. UCLA's well off the line of scrimmage. Well, he caught the winner last week, the 63-yard winner in the fourth quarter against Colorado, and he's got six career touchdowns of 50 yards or more. He's their burner. He's the guy that just gets behind defenses, and right now he's man-to-man -man on the outside with no safety help. Might be worth a shot. Give it off on the running play. Mitz battling. Man gets past the first. He's got about eight, nine yards on the play. So mixing things up effectively. Balance for Washington State early. Yeah, just missed tackles. I mean, you know, LeGuan Mitz has stopped right at the line of scrimmage. You see, UCLA doesn't do a bad job up front. 
But there's the hit. But nobody's wrapping up on that play. And then once he stops, it looked like the Bruins just kind of let up a little bit, and he turned the corner for a nice gain of nine. The matchup you were talking about on the lower half of the screen, Hester up against Wilson, and it'll be overthrown. There was contact early, and it wasn't while the ball was in the air. Wilson turned around, working against Hester like there was. Well, in Aaron Hester right now with all the injuries, he's the experienced guy. Good size, too. 6-1, does a nice job of staying really in front of Wilson. That's a good no-call. Good job of just mirroring him there, not letting him get behind him, Joel. He's going to get tested now because this kid is a big play receiver. They can lull you to sleep with a lot of these short passes, but eventually they're going to take your deep shot. And an interesting formation now for Washington State on third and less than two. High snap for Lobustall, but it works out. Mitts off balance. <laughs> his head and his body flailing, and he gets the first down all the way to the 26. All three of his runs on this drive are to the left side, running behind Gonzalez and Fullington, guys with a lot of experience over there. Gonzalez is the senior. Here they are lined up and ready to go. Let's take a look at these receivers here, Joel. They all line up. Once they get the play, watch them, the stance that they get. They'll get down, they'll get crouched, like almost in a sprinter stance. Little counter action. It doesn't fool UCLA that time. So a loss on the play as they drop Carl Winston, the other running back. And the loss is back to the 29 yard line. Loss of three. Now they got some penetration that time. And now they really kind of force Washington State's hand here. Second and 13. Probably going to be a pass. Lobestall here will echo the play to the line. Now he'll take his spot in the shotgun formation about five yards behind Getz, the center. Pick up the foot. Ready to start the play. Looks one way. Comes back the other way. Looking for a little bubble action. And open field tackle is a good one on Christoph Williams, a redshirt freshman from Antioch, California. An outstanding play by Hester. This tempo is really the rage of college football. You know, we, we've seen it in, at Oklahoma, at Oregon. You know, so many teams right now, how many plays can they run? That's And really, the key to this up-tempo offense is execution. Can you convert these third downs to stay on the field? Well, a very efficient start, as you saw, hitting 80% of his passes early. Marshall Lobosol, now third and long, though. Will he have enough time? No. It'll be a delay of game on Lobosol. So you mark off five instead of third and nine. Delay of game on the offense. Five yards. That's truly the only mistake they've made in the first 15 minutes of play, and it comes with only 36 seconds left. Yeah, Paul Wolf has his team ready to play tonight, but, you know, on the road, they go to a no-huddle offense, or no-huddle and a silent count. So they'll just look at Marshall Lobestall to pick up his foot. The center, Matt Getz, will get tapped by the right guard, B.J. Guerra. And when Guerra taps the leg of Getz, he knows that the quarterback is ready. Bottom of the screen, he's got Marquise Wilson on single coverage. Needs 14 to keep the drive alive. Ton of time. And the low throw, but enough for the first down. As it's picked up and talked about him again, Marquise Wilson, 6'4", 185 pounder. I was watching film yesterday in the defensive lineman's room. And in big, bold letters, Joel said, Minimize the pass protection of Washington State. Now, I'm Lobestall had way too much time to find his second or third receiver. And, and even that late on the throw, there was nobody close no. to the quarterback. So that is going to do it for the first quarter of play. And a dominating one offensively for Lobestall and Washington State. They did not capitalize in the red zone the first time. We'll find out for the second time when they come back with a first and 10 at the UCLA 15. A three to nothing lead for the Cougars on the road as you're watching Pac-12 College Football Saturday presented by KFC. One of the highest scoring teams in the nation, the Cougars of Washington State. 
on a drive as we welcome you back to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Joel Myers, Brian Balding here, along with Jim Knox. Time for our Russell Athletic Game Summary, and you can see the difference already. Three and out twice for UCLA and Washington State controlling the line of scrimmage. I'm right here. Eight first downs. That's, that's the key figure for Paul Wolf's Washington State Cougars. Short passing game mixed in with some, you know, a little mix of runs and play keep away. And right now their their game plan is being executed beautifully. Wilson on the short side. They put Barton in motion and give it to Galvin. And the little guy rolls inside the 15. A bolt to the 12. Just about four on that carry. You know, this Ricky Galvin something here, Joe. You know, he started last year as a freshman and he got hurt on the very first play and was out for the season and here he is you know, coming back this year now you know a little little stronger all right you can see that he's a big part of this offense good change of pace back they use three Galvin Winston and Mitts all three of them have contributed here it'll be second and seven it'll be Galvin again and nice lead block gets him inside the 10 down to the nine yard line short of the first down though by four so they bring Guerra that time yeah. out in front of the play you saw that right Joel yep yeah BJ Guerra got his track shoes on leading the sweep around the left side and and Galvin smart just kind of hides in his hip pocket you know and uh, gets himself about half the distance here for this set up for this third down bring Winston into the contest Galvin sits down it'll be third and four inside the 10. Winston's a bigger back help out in pass protection a little bit better Can they capitalize in the red zone UCLA bringing the extra rusher corner of the end zone and overthrown looking for Gino Simone so the opportunity was there on a first and 10 from the 15 now the kicking unit coming back on to the frustration of Marshall Lobostall. Well, I mean, here it is. The ball's in the air. I said, how you play the ball in the air? It's just an overthrow. I mean, really good coverage on the outside. It's two red zone stops by UCLA defense. So while they haven't played well, they've come up with big stops, and they're in the game as a result. It'll be a 26-yard attempt. Fernie is now 6-6 six and six on the season. And make it seven of seven. So a six to nothing lead. The Cougars on to the Bruins. Welcome back to the Rose Bowl. Our aerial coverage this evening provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned, making tires that go the distance, inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. And we thank them for these spectacular shots on a perfect night. Look at that. Huh? In Pasadena. And UCLA really fortunate they're only down six. They don't have a first down of the game yet with 13-32 left in the half. I like what Washington State's doing defensively, though. They're stacking a the box, bringing the safety down, really challenging UCLA to throw the ball. Then they're playing press coverage on the outside. And so far, Brijo has not been able to beat him. Fernie with a short one. It's going to be Josh Smith outside of the five. Can he find a lane to the outside? Cut off at the pass. And an outstanding job on special teams play by Washington State. For a course like game break, let's go to Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. First Big Ten conference game ever at Nebraska, and it's a memorable one. Rex Burkhead cashes it in. Nebraska down 21 in the third quarter, runs off 28 unanswered points. Cornhuskers over Ohio State late, 34-27. Thank you, Kevin. Wow, and boy, Ohio State looked like they were going to pull away and put it away for good. What a comeback by the Huskers. Our free credit score.com scoring drive 10 53, but they had to settle for three once again. And UCLA, as they slam it straight ahead and get it out to the 20 yard line, we talked about special teams play because their place kickers have really had problems for UCLA over the first five games of the year. Little do we know their special teams and the return game would hurt them early tonight because their field position has been awful. Well, I said special teams has to play good for UCLA. It has to give them a lift. And so far, they've given them horrible field position. Little jet action. Yep. Jordan James in decision and a call. Great play on the outside. Kafusi 
and you talked about their linebackers, all three can really run to the football. I really like this Sokopi Kafuze, though. I mean, he's a guy that has great, great speed. And you see him on the outside. He gets leveraged now. He stays on his feet. And they wanted to get Jordan James the ball on the outside. But there's Kafuze. He doesn't even let Simmons get a hand on him. Just leaves, leaves his body go right there in the air. Just reckless. All three linebackers really play well here. Play fast, downhill, and all are good tackles. Kafusi moved to the starting lineup along with Mizell after the UCLA game last year. They had to get bigger at linebacker after UCLA ran for better than 400 yards on Washington State. Now, Rijo on third down, a wide open receiver, and it's complete. He's got a first down. It's Carroll on the outside, the junior from right here in L.A. And UCLA, you can hear the old Bronx yeah. cheer in the background. These fans, they're giving it to him. Yeah. Finally. Finally, we get a shot of the student section, huh? Well, they played zone that time. And Brijo read it, and Carroll sat down in it. And, you know, it was the first really good throw by Brijo tonight. We'll see if that can give Rick Neuheisel some confidence to dial up more plays to the outside like that. And a little space. Breathing room field position-wise, out to the 32. So first down on the play fake with Coleman. He's going for the bundle. And he's looking for Carroll, who's available, and it's off his fingertips. It is right there. That's exactly what Rick Neuheisel was talking to us about yesterday, Joel. We need big plays. And they had it. They got DeMonte Horton in there starting because Nolan Richardson is hurt. Carroll runs away with him. No safety in the middle of the field. Now, when you throw this go route, this scene, you got to connect on it. that's perfect throw. it's a good throw it's right you can see it I mean it's right through the gloves you got to put a little stick them on those gloves Randall because that's a well-thrown ball man he knows it. he knows it he knows it it'll be second in ten it'll be Brio after the play fake on his own read man he takes a shot well they paid for it and we talked about this young man earlier because he's coming off a big game and that is Jordan Robinson Sophomore from Hawaii. He showed up on the film after the win at Colorado as well. Jordan Pu'u Robinson. There he is. Look at that kiss. Right to the chest. <laughs> that may loosen up a few rib cartilage well, muscles or... Or fillings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fillings too. That's a deep clean. They have some hitters on this defense now. This is not the same defense. They gave up 437 yards rushing to the Bruins a year ago. Right here in the Rose Bowl. So now third and four. At the UCLA 38. Embry was the motion man. Ton of time, and it's the motion man. Unaccounted for. First down, UCLA. In past the 45. Out to the 46. That's Embry. Dropped by Locker. Embry's the senior. He's just a pro. He's not a burner. You know, step a little bit too slow, but you'll see right in the middle of the field right here. Embry's going to come wide open, what they call a flanker drive. Tight end goes down the field. Embry cuts right off him. He's eighth on UCLA's all-time reception list. So the Bruins, they have to feel fortunate. They're trailing by only six after two long drives stalled inside the red zone for Washington State. And they had to settle for 21 in 26-yard field goals. Brijo running the option. And he's got it across the midfield stripe. Took a pop at the end of the play. He's down to the 49. Ooh, see? and you could see where he got yeah. that shot at the end of the play. And, and that's the problem with the whole pistol formation. Your yeah. quarterback is asked to be a runner. He's down. And you take hits like that. Yeah, he's exposed. And that's why Kevin Prince, who's putting in the helmet ride now, yeah. has been in and out of this lineup so frequently because they are exposed to real serious shots. Yeah, and that one's to his ankle, and that's not good. Lyman at the end of the play. Yeah, it falls right on him. Falls right, and that's Leonard Williams. Falls right on that ankle. Bam. So they look at Richard Brio. Prince warms up, and we'll return to the Rose Bowl in just a moment. Pac-12 College Football Saturday brought to you by Frostbrew Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Also by MFS Investment Management, and by Russell Athletic, who reminds you that together we are. Well, Brio, even if he can come back, he had to leave for at least one play because the staff was on the field, the medical staff. And now Kevin Prince takes over as UCLA is down by six. 
best drive the Bruins so far. They've got a second and about six. Prince is in at quarterback. And Coleman is down in a hurry. And the injury was at the back end of the play. Leonard Williams, Jr. from South Carolina, rolled over the leg. You're going to see 93 come into your picture from Washington State. He's going to land on it at the end of this play and roll right over that left ankle, left leg. And that's the danger to this pistol formation is you're exposing your quarterback running with the football. The poster child for this offense was Colin Kaepernick at the University of Nevada, but he was 245 and fast, not built like these guys. It'll be Prince. Man, he's got the first down. He, he, a nice play fake <laughs> to the running back. Jim Knox, what's going on? All right, Richard Brio right behind me on the training table. And guys, right now, what they're telling me, it's his high left ankle. High ankle sprain, perhaps, right now. That's what they're working on. That's what the trainers are telling me. He's down on the table, so they're taking a good look at that left ankle. High ankle sprain, the early diagnosis on Richard Brio. Well, they say high. That's not good. Yep. Nope. That means ligaments are involved, and that means a longer recovery time. If that's exactly what it is. It'll be a first down. Man, it's going to be Derek Coleman. He ran for 185 yards last year. Franklin 216 yards for UCLA against the same Cougar lineup. And but we talked about the linebackers. They've changed dramatically. And this Derek Coleman is an unbelievable story because he's deaf, born deaf, and he can't hear. So he has to read lips. So any kind of an audible call. Kevin Prince is going to have to turn down, uh, turn around, look at him behind him, and make sure he knows what the change play is. But it doesn't affect the way he plays, the way he interacts with his teammates. It's really an incredible story. Rarely do you ever see a running back like that. Prince looking deep down the middle. The grabs there in and out of the hands. Nelson Rosario, did he hold on to the football long enough? Now are they going to say he's down inside the five? Well, there's no back judge. And they're giving him the score. That will definitely be reviewed. Well, here it is. Rosario going down the middle. Got to beat press coverage. Gets a step. You can see the height advantage. We said that there was going to be an advantage there. That's got a touchdown. He's across the line yes. with possession. Touchdown. They beat Nolan Richardson. It's a good call. I think there's enough possession as he crosses the goal line, Joel, to give him the touchdown. Well, it looked like he was trying to bring it away from his body to clear it out to show I do have the football. We said there was such a, a size advantage with these useless the receivers. How would the smaller defensive backs of Washington State play the ball in the air? And if they want me a uh, pick me up for Kevin Prince, they just got one. Oh, yeah. But a beautifully thrown ball. That's across the line. The shoulder's down. He's down. That's. Now, in the NFL, you've got to possess it all the way through. It looked to me like he crossed, but on a touchdown, it's this different. Is, this is Saturday. You brought up Sunday. I know, but <laughs> just saying, he crossed the goal line with possession of the ball, and his shoulder was down. That should be, I think they're going to see this as a touchdown. Now, remember, this is the first series, the third of the game for UCLA, but the first, they've even had a first down. Yeah. Well, Prince just gave him a lift. Just gave him a big lift. So, Brio is headed to the locker room for further evaluation. And, and remember, Prince had only six completions coming in. He was hurt in the Houston game. Yep. Comes back against Texas, and he had three interceptions in the first quarter of the Texas game. So, a guy that needs this for confidence purposes. Yeah. And these two guys, Brio and Prince, have been going back and forth for three years. Injuries, substitutions, they've gone back and forth. I don't know. Rosario is a big man and 220 pounds, the senior. Well, he's 6'5, Fourier is 6'8. Yeah. Taylor Embry is 6'3. That's what Jim Knox was talking about at the top of the telecast. The length of UCLA at key skill positions. And, and, and really, Rick Neuheisel told me yesterday that. You know, while we ran the ball great and we, we are a good running football team, we need the big plays. We need the big chunk plays because it's hard to put 12, 13, 14 plays together and execute in order to score. It's nice when you can go up top and get the big play. Now, Rosario Kane leading the Bruins in receiving, but he didn't have a touchdown catch. 
And that's one of the big problems for UCLA. I thought Playmakers that can get the ball into the end zone. I thought he had a great opportunity on the opening drive last week up in Palo Alto against Stanford. Caught the ball at the three. And I thought he could have done what he just did there. I thought he could have taken it in on the opening After drive. After further review, the runner's knee was down with the ball short of the goal line at the one half yard line. First down and goal. Well, it's first and goal. It's not fourth and goal like last week at Stanford. Yeah. So good play action fake to Coleman. Prince steps in. This is a good throw. Plenty of protection. All right, let's see the knee here. I guess that left knee is good down. Call. Yeah. Good yeah. call. We're blocked to a certain extent, yeah. but you can see the knee yeah. is down before the ball broke the plane. So now UCLA needs a half a yard to take the lead. Well, they were in a similar situation last week, like we were just saying, against Stanford in the opening drive. And I thought they could have thrown it. I think really got to put it in the hands of one of their talented running backs right now. Let's see how they do this week at a goal line situation. First and goal. Coleman is back there. He's got it. And battling. Wow. Did he get there? Nope. They push him back. What an effort. <laughs> Washington State denies him. That was Hoffman Ellis again, wow. the defensive player of the week, and you can understand why. What a motor. Uh, he gave him the initial jolt, but then there's a bunch of Cougars that jumped in there with him. I mean, I'm giving it to Coleman, too. 240 pounds. Bam, look at that stop. Wow. That's Mizell in the middle, the middle linebacker. Hoffman came, Hoffman Ellis came to clean it up. It'll be Coleman. Left side, he's in this time. UCLA is finally on the board. Coleman may be deaf, but he knows that the crowd right now is cheering for that touchdown finishing that drive. Now, can you see how they kick an extra point? Yes. <laughs> this young man, Tyler Gonzalez, out of Fullerton High School, was the soccer manager for the Bruins just a few weeks ago. Can he give them the lead? They actually have an extra point. I bring that up because they have missed four of their last five extra points. That one, in golf <laughs> terms, was dead solid perfect. <laughs> So UCLA with an advantage. 7 to 6, still 7 3 left in the half of the Rose Bowl. Coming up on Geico Halftime Report, we will recap the entire day from the college football world. Also, Marcus Allen weighs in on the passing of football legend Al Davison. Got to tell you guys, huge cheer in the studio for Tyler Gonzalez when he kicks his first field goal. The manager turned kicker, doing well so far. Guys. Really? <laughs> he should be our standard. Jeff Lock will kick it away for UCLA as the Boons have their first lead of the contest. Looking for their first conference. Well, they do have a conference win. Coming in at 1-1 one one in Pac-12 play. It's brought back by Isaiah Bart down the sideline and an outstanding run past the 40 to the 42. He got jolted a little bit at the end of the play. And tonight's game, we remind you, is being shown on AFN. Thank you, guys, Thank gals, you. for uh, the opportunity for us to be here at the Rose Bowl tonight. It goes out to the United States Armed Forces, seen in 175 countries, aboard ships at sea. They're watching around the world. Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, Japan. And welcome aboard. Beautiful night in Pasadena. Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox. Game time temperature 65 degrees. That's a jolt when a guy gets tugged from behind and yeah. he's going 100 miles an hour. Yeah, that's Isaiah Barton, one of their one of their inside slot receivers that they really depend on. And the few times tonight that Washington State's not in four wide receivers. He keeps the two backs in there. It's going to be Winston on first down, trying to plug it up the middle. Man, only about two yards on the carry. Jim Knox, what's cooking? All right, Joel, Richard Brio still in the locker room. They're checking out that ankle, but also defensive side. You got Jamie Graham right there, starting defensive back for UCLA. Hard-hitting defensive back. Someone hit him from the side. He's out of the game with a knee injury. He's going to have an MRI tomorrow, so a big blow right there for that UCLA defense. And they can't afford it on the back end, as you mentioned, in the secondary. It's now second and long for the Cougars. Marquise Wilson, you've got to keep an eye on him. Instead, big run up the middle. Now a first down inside. 
the 45. And they have power backs, but Winston's not a big back anyway. You talk about more, he's got more pounds, 5'8", 200. Both 5'8", though, Galvin and Winston. But Joel, watch how he finishes this run. Punishing run as he hits Dietrich Riley right there and goes falls forward, gets an extra two yards. But he lowered that shoulder and ran over the safety. Pro a little bit behind Wilson, but he adjusted. On first down, good yardage, about six. That's that old BYOB, be your own blocker. When you lower your shoulders a running back and take them on, is? you got it. That's what it is? I thought <laughs> be it was, your own. I thought it's what you do in restaurants on Friday night, Joel. <laughs> Always. Be consistent. It'll be second and four. All the guys look over to the sideline looking for the signals. Signals coming in from Jeff Toole. How would you like Hester's job that I try to keep up with Marquise Wilson? Oof. He's a burner. Don't blink. They need four. And they'll put Winston down after he got only one. So another key third down coming up for the Cougars. They have looked good between the 20s. Now can they take advantage of great field position once again starting this drive at the 40, their own 42. There it is. There's Jeff Toole giving. You got all that? Something with the pistol. I, I know both hands went up. Like a water pistol right there. And he could be the decoy. Yeah, maybe. I don't know how you can read the signals that quick, even if you're trying to steal them. Good news. Barton is back in the game for the Cougars. Need a little more than three. He comes. It's there. And it's Barton. He's got the first down at the 30. As he's dropped over there by Tevin McDonald. Well, that's nice. Barton coming back in the game. Injured on the kickoff return. But catches the key third down. And they... Somebody better put a little stick him on the back of his jersey. That Barton looks like it's too flimsy. Now, working in a hurry, and it pays off to Barton. It'll be first and goal inside the 10 on McDonald again. <laughs> and they went with a little rhythm that time, tempo. Yeah, they did. They caught UCLA. I don't think they were really set up that time. Just an inside corner route by the slot receiver, and that's what Barton is. And that was a nice throw by Logosol across the field. He's got Galvin. He's going to give it to Galvin. He's belted inside the eight, dropped at the seven. So here's the, here's the game right now. I mean, you know, Washington State now has driven down here two previous times, kept out of the end zone, forced to kick field goals. You know, I mean, UCLA is leading right now because they play great red zone defense. Second down at the eight. See what kind of coverage that they give here. Kendrickson at linebacker. Shifts Karstetter on second and goal. No heat of the quarterback on the deflection. It's incomplete. Well, it was McDonald who got his hand on the ball first of all. And then the opportunity in the end zone. Andrew Abbott. Well, Karstetter came in motion that time. He was out wide. He came in tighter right here. Mm. Boy, that ball was right through the hands of McDonald. McDonald in for for die and that was a golden opportunity to take points off the board completely. So now third and goal. McDonald remember it, it, he is just a freshman. It's all new to him. Going to the corner Hester battling and will wow. they give it to him Wilson comes down and they say no it was incomplete it's on the far side of the field Wilson did not have control. It was it was loose on its way down. Yeah, Hester, good coverage. Here it is on the outside. Oh, that's a good play by there Hester. Yeah, he got the strip. Not a bad throw. It was actually in the hands of Wilson. <laughs> Lobenstall threw it well. I thought he was going to bring it in because he did get his hands yeah. on the ball. A good finish that time by Hester. Good action out there in the corners tonight, baby. It'll be a 24-yard field goal try. You're spoiled by Wilson's play. And it's everything in his neighborhood seems like it's good to be in his hands and maintain control and now it's going to be a delay of game once again delay of game on the offense five yard penalty still fourth down now mark east wilson gets two hands on the ball what do you think what are the chances he's coming down well i mean look you got to squeeze it now all right you got two hands but look at hester hester oh yeah no that was just a drop hester really never got his hand on it but still look he's got five touchdown catches this year so that could have been a six that was well thrown. Got to complete the catch, though. 
Washington. Now a 29-yard attempt. Fernie yet to miss this year. Low snap, and he pulled it. It stays a one-point UCLA lead. And it may have been that low snap, but there's going to be also a penalty flag. And will it be a celebration penalty against UCLA? Wow. Personal foul, leaping on the defense. Penalties in fourth, half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So the offense is back on the field to the disbelief of Rick Neuheisel. Well, they put some of their tallest guys, including Joseph Fourier, on, like, that's Fourier there at 6'8". And he's leaping. I don't see anybody climbing. Uh, I mean, you could jump straight up. You just can't go on the back of anybody, what they call leverage. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not, he's not pushing his hand on the back to try to get higher. I don't know if I agree with that call, if well, that's who it's on. They said it was it was catapulting off the back of someone else. Here goes the running back, Winston, that's inside it. the five. That's a bad break for UCLA. Well, that's a different, to get the ball back. A different definition of catapulting when I learned, you know, in my dictionary. Catapulting <laughs> means you, you put your hand on somebody, or you put a pole on the ground, and you're catapulted over somebody. And you don't look like the type of guy that was the yell leader. No, 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 I wasn't. Somebody else did that job. It'll be second and goal at the three. Blue Eyes has got to be sick, though. They had yeah. points off the board. They kept this team out of the end zone. Well, he's sick now. He's going to be deeply depressed when he sees the film. Inside of three left in the half. On the play fake, a ton of time once again. And on his way down is Lobestall. The sack. Dayton Jones, who did not show up with one single stop last week, finally got to the quarterback, but still, that's a coverage sack. That's all coverage. I mean, that's just good work by a lot of young guys that are getting a chance to play because of a lot of injuries to the secondary. Take a look at everybody here. I mean, you got a man-to-man -man situation here. Little bunch formation. They knocked that off. Boy, there's four white jerseys in the end zone, and there's four blue jerseys, powder blue jerseys all around it. Now third and goal outside of the four. Got a timeout. It'll be taken for Washington State. So that is their first. It comes with 2.05 remaining in the half. They have stalled two other times inside the red zone. This was a real break, though. This is a reprieve because it was a missed field goal. Coming up at the half, Marcus Allen. Well, they're joining us with Kevin Frazier. Top 25 scores, highlights from around the nation, and Marcus's thoughts as well on Al Davis. Al, one of the great uh, innovators of this game. Very, very responsible for the merging of the AFL and the NFL. 1965. Been a lot of time out here in California with San Diego Chargers in college, with the Raiders both in Los Angeles and in the Bay Area. Commitment to excellence, Joel. And that music. You can hear it. Yeah, that marching music. You know, I, I the first <laughs> time I met Al Davis, I was doing a game and announcing a game. It was Oakland and Tampa, and he spotted me about 30 yards away, came up to me and told me exactly what high school I graduated from and the year that I got out of it. <laughs> it was his little... His little quirk that he knew about everybody in the business. Let's see if that timeout taken by Washington State pays off for the Cougars. Third and goal for the four. He's got it and drops it. Karstetter had it in his hands. The senior. The senior who's basically their go-to guy. Here's on the outside. He's going to run a little stop route right at the goal line, and Lobestall put it right on him. Bam. He's got the foot in the end zone. He's trying to anchor himself down. I think he took his eyes off the ball just as he wanted to turn his body and get that ball over the goal line. I don't think we're going to have a delay game this time. It'll be a 21-yard try, just a yard more than an extra point for Fernie. He is still perfect, don't forget, 7 of 7.
This time, he's got it. And Washington State is back on top with a minute. 56 left in the first half of play of the Rose Bowl. So the Cougars, well, they've been moving it. As I said, look great between the 20s, but they've had to settle for three field goals. Cougars by two on the third field goal of the game for Andrew Fernie from Burlington, Washington. As we welcome you back to the Rose Bowl. Josh Smith going back deep along with Derek Coleman. Fernie will kick it away. They've been short. He's a directional guy. Tries to pin the returner to the boundary, and he's done an effective job because UCLA has not had any returns whatsoever in this contest. Over to the near side. And on the run is Smith from the 12. He's got a lane to the 30, and that's the best field position for UCLA so far as he takes it out to the 37. Recognize now the lot impact player of the week the only collegiate award where character counts and is awarded to a defensive player that best exemplifies integrity maturity performance academics community and tenacity and last week's winner USC safety TJ McDonald a junior from Fresno who intercepted two passes six stops in the game and recovered the onside kick to preserve the Trojans 48 to 41 win over Arizona. So now what does UCLA do? They've got all three of their timeouts remaining. Well, they got good field position. So I think you got to take advantage of that first time today. You know, where you got some three timeouts right now, they've got to attack here. Carroll's the motion man. Man is Jonathan Franklin. And Jonathan Franklin's into the second area of the first down across the midfield strike. Kind of the forgotten man of the first half, the guy who ran for 216 yards last year against this team. Yeah, and 30 carries too. Just hasn't had the ball very much, but he comes off the right side. Fourier does a good job of sealing the edge here. Get Maeva, the center, getting out there, getting a good lead block, and Franklin the first time that he was able to get free tonight. They take it down to the 46 of Washington State. And go right back to the hot hand. He slugs his way for about four, maybe five inside the 42, and that's Franklin. UCLA has stopped the clock, calls a time, and as we remind you, the first and ten line is brought to you by Russell Athletic. So UCLA trying to regain the lead. And a huge game for UCLA when you look at down-the-road purposes for them. They have to maintain their home field advantage. They already got thumped here. It was a non-conference game against Texas, but there's a premium on conference home games. Sure. And Washington State, you got to remember, that was only their second conference road win last week in Boulder over the last four years. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is their third straight away game for the Cougars right now. And you look at UCLA right now, they're, they played great, great red zone defense, limiting the Cougars to three first-half field goals. And now Kevin Prince in running the offense for the injured Richard Brijo. And he gave him a lift on his first series coming in for Brijo. They have a great deep route throw to Nelson Rosario to set up their only touchdown. Keeps Franklin to the backfield on second and a long five, almost six. And the little jump cut over to the left side pays off. Another first down. Effective running by Jonathan Franklin. Yeah. He's out of Dorsey High School here in Los Angeles. But he looks happy that he's getting the ball right now. I met him on campus yesterday. Bright kid, big smile, happy kid. You know, look at him. He's like, he's just shifting gears right there in the middle freeway, trying to find an extra blade of grass. They will throw on first down, and it should have been intercepted. <laughs> he threw into not only triple coverage, there were four around the intended target. All the linebackers. Mizell was back there. He didn't see it coming. <laughs> but you got to wonder. You're running the ball effectively, and now. Yeah, but you know it's not bad taking a shot. You just can't force the shot in there. And it was know? and it was available underneath. Yeah, you know, not don't be afraid to take the check down. You know these backs on the outside can make people miss. Second and ten, at the 29 of Washington State. Moving the pocket, man available out on the outside. Catches there for Ricky Marvray, his first of the night. 
as we check in with Jim Knox. Joel, you guys talked about it earlier. It's going to be interesting to see who kicks field goals for UCLA. Jeff Locke, you know, kicked last week, had a rough time at it. Now, over 40 yards, they'll go with number 18 Locke, but Tyler Gonzalez right here teeing the ball up. Interesting story. He was a student manager for the soccer team. He's been working out with the team for three weeks. They say he's going to do the chip shots. We'll see what happens. Watched him in warm-ups, and he hit effectively outside of 40. They need a yard, they get a lot more from their bull of a back who took a shot at the end of the play as they stood him up at the 15. That's Derek Coleman, who you talked about, a former National High School Player of the Year in 2009. Well, UCLA has two timeouts left. They don't look like they're going to use one here. They're going to run the clock down. But I like having as much time as I can on the clock to have as many op options as you need in order to think touchdown here. It's a first down. Prince has taken over. If you join us, Bria Hole hurt. Now going into the corner of the end zone on a jump ball, and it's intercepted. Taken away, and what timing by Domonte Horton. So Prince victimized the last time he was a starter for UCLA, and that was underthrown, wasn't it? Yep. But Rosario has got to be a defender in this situation. Horton getting a lot of playing time with the banged up Nolan Richardson. They're going to him one on one. Nelson Rosario he cannot let Horton come down with this ball. I mean he's got to pull him away from the ball. You got to grab him by the shoulder pad. You got to get physical with him right there but you cannot give and that's what New Hiles is saying to him right now. And, and in watching the replay it's easier from up here. It's almost like he missed time to jump. He went yeah. early and the ball was coming in while he was on his way down. Yeah it's true. It's true but still the ball is everything, Joel. And I said before the game started tonight, how Washington State plays the ball in the air may determine the outcome of this game tonight. That took points away from UCLA. Great play by Horton. So it's halftime in Pasadena. Man, Horton, who grew up right here in this area, actually, yes, in the, well, the Bay Area. The sophomore from Oakland makes the big play at the end of the half for the Cougars to preserve their two-point lead. So Washington State up nine to seven and when we come back we're going to take you to our Coors Light studio with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. It's halftime in Pasadena and the Cougars looking for their second straight road conference victory leads it by two nine to seven. Magnificent night in Southern California as we welcome you back to Pac-12 College Football Saturday presented by KFC and a close one at the break with the Cougars looking for their fourth win of the year. Joel Myers alongside Brian Baldinger and it could be even a bigger lead for Washington State but they've been frustrated three times inside the red zone. Lucky in fact the third time though to get a field goal out of it. Well they've really controlled the action controlled the tempo of this game but they haven't capitalized and they haven't scored touchdowns. Meanwhile UCLA here they took advantage. Of the one big throw, Kevin Prince came in for an injured Richard Brio, found his senior receiver Nelson Rosario down at the one, and later on Derek Coleman would punch it in from the one for the only touchdown of the day. But these are some of the missed opportunities by the Cougars. You're going to see Marquise Wilson out here, got the ball in his hands, can't bring it all the way in, forced to kick a field goal, and then look, Jared Karstetter is about as sure-handed a receiver as the Cougars have ever had. Can't bring that ball in, and they were held to three first-half field goals. And as we look at the first-half numbers, you can see the domination by Washington State, the way they held on to the football. But it means nothing if you really look good between the 20s and you can't do anything once you get inside the 20. And it's ironic because we had mentioned at the top of the telecast that they were third best in capitalizing on touchdowns percentage-wise in the red zone over their four, first four games this year. But a lot of people, let's face it, Brian, have said, who has Washington State played so far this season? Well, this is the best opponent. UCLA is the best opponent. They struggled against Colorado. And look, they uh, they have been coming in scoring over 50 points a game, and here they are held to nine first-half points. Let's join Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, Joel, news, bad news on the UCLA, side, UCLA sideline. Richard Brio, the quarterback, out. A fractured left leg. Oh. Fractured left leg. He is out, guys. The bad news, sad news for that young man. That's all you can say. And you wish him the best that he could get back this year, but 
a fractured leg at this point. Well, they have been going back and forth, Prince and Brijo, for three years, and you know, both of them have suffered injuries that have knocked them out in each of the last three years. And so now it's uh, Prince's turn to and see if he can, you know, bring this team back here in the second half. And as we talk about Rick Neuheisel's pistol formation, which they like here and they want to stay with it, Prince has better wheels. Yes. It's his decision making that's been in question. Well, the interceptions against Texas, people will always go back to that. But really, if you're running the pistol formation and you're asking your quarterback to turn the corner against these head hunting defenses, injuries are probably going to occur more than if you play from the pocket. It'll be Josh Smith on a very short one coming up to the 13 yard line, making a miss. And again, UCLA with great field position on the short kick. So Smith did not run himself out of the play and adjusted accordingly. As he's down by Cohen at the 39 yard line. Had the possessions for UCLA. Well, they didn't have a first down until 90 seconds into the second quarter. Yeah, two quick three and outs. Brijo really kind of struggled. It's now Kevin Prince's offense to see what he can do about it. This is, look, it's a second quarter, second half game. It's tight. It's anybody's game right here. You know, who could take care of the fall? Probably going to determine the outcome. Now Prince with Franklin in the backfield weaving his way across the 40 short gain about three up to the 42 and the first half leaders for the UCLA Bruins well Franklin didn't see it that often and when he saw it late he made the most of it well I think that's what UCLA should do get back to running the football it's what they do best they've got three good backs and I think they've got to get Franklin going here because a back has to get his carries to get a rhythm and six carries in the first half wasn't enough. Second and long. And you look for the rhythm and Franklin's got it down the sideline. There he goes. Can he stay in bounds? No. He's out with the first down. Otherwise, he probably takes it to the end zone, cutting it back into the scene. Really patient on that run, too. Really patient before he hit his burst. Yeah, it comes right off of the, the pistol formation. Prince is going to hand it to him there. You got two linemen out front. Maeva leaves a great block. The center pulls and leads. Nice block by the center. And just watching him on film, I think that Kai Maeva is having a good season. And that's that's what you never want to see in any sport is a kid on crutches that, uh, you know, lives for game day. So Richard Brio starting but out. It's available. Nelson Rosario making a miss. And he's got a first down for the 20-yard line. Better pass by Prince. Well, now they have it working. You now you get the long run, you get the quick pass on the sprint right option here. Getting the ball up to, to Rosario. Did a good job of putting that ball away. And I think if Rosario wants to make a profession out of playing wide receiver at that next level, he's got to be better with the ball in his hands after the catch. So not big chunks for UCLA after the pass play to Rosario. Before that, a 17-yard run. For Jonathan Franklin. Man, a timeout for UCLA with some confusion. Timeout. In the back. UCLA. Timeout. But remember, as Rick Neuheisel wants to get a reason why he called the timeout, Prince wasn't taking most of the reps during practice this week. Pac 12 College Football Saturday is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance by Dr. Pepper. Giving away over $1 million in tuition, go to drpepper.com for all the details. And by Chrysler, imported from Detroit. Back at the Rose Bowl, Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, and Jim Knox. We could not ask for a better weekend to be in Southern California. Ooh. Washington State up by two. UCLA with the first possession for either side here in the second half. And Kevin Prince, man of the moment. Brio's a fractured left leg. The starting quarterback. Prince has taken over. He's got st plenty of starting experience when he's been healthy. Now what's it going to be? Prince has him in the flat. It's available. Jordan James inside the 10. Dragged down from behind with a first and goal. He's the jet. He is the speed out of the backfield. And the spark. And it was really a great play action fake to Franklin inside. And then just a quick pop to James on the outside. Here you'll see the fake to, to Franklin. Bam. Holds the line now. You get Prince on the outside. Nice looking play. James looks like a guy that 
wants to finish. Really has a, a nose for the goal line. So now UCLA trying to regain the lead. Puts the big back in there. Derek Coleman. He's got it. Left side, big lane. And Belton. Hoffman Ellis again with help. Pulling him down just shy of the one. Two linebackers there. Mizell, the middle linebacker, coming right at you. Right into your living room right here. Looks like there's a hole there, right? Bam. There's Hoffman Ellis, Mizell, both linebackers been active today. And they're the story, really, along with Kafusi, the three linebackers for Washington State. And their success so far this year defensively. Second and goal, jam the line. Give it to Coleman, just plugging his way. Did he get there? Yes. yes. Touchdown, UCLA. Nice looking drive by the Bruins to start the third quarter. Really good mix. Excellent play by Prince all the way down the field. And Coleman here, 240 pounds. Good surge up front. Capella. You see a good job by Baca, the left tackle, number 60. He's in the end zone. You get the left tackle in the end zone. Generally, the pick is right behind him. Extra point is good. And that's a story. Two consecutive makes with a flag on the play. So Tyler Gonzalez, sign him up. Oh, they did already just a few weeks ago. And UCLA leads by five. a special feeling anytime you come into this old stadium and the beautiful setting that we have the Rose Bowl in Pasadena and now UCLA trying to defend their home field advantage has a lead once again and it didn't long it didn't look like the UCLA team that we saw in the first half uh, they were very decisive decisive big chunk yardage both in the running game and from Prince the plays were executed perfectly and the result was you know, the best drive of the day. Now, there was a 15-yard mark-off, a personal foul at the end of the play, a dead ball foul, so now Jeff Locke is going to be kicking from back at his own 15. Isaiah Barton waits with Marcus Mason, and it's going to be taken by Barton all the way up at the 23. Good return across the 40 to the midfield strike, and he's got it inside the UCLA 45. Talk about coming back with a big play. That's what Washington State just got from Isaiah Barton. Our aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. The spirit of America up there tonight providing these incredible shots for us in Pasadena. And the stars are out tonight. Clear skies. I haven't now, seen a cloud in two days here, Joel. Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you have to suffer through you each day. Six months without a cloud in Southern California. Well, there's an injured Bruin, unfortunately, as they help up. Stan McKay. That's good to see on his own. Now, UCLA is going with Kevin Prince at quarterback. Don't forget, they're thin at that position behind. They don't want to use Brett Hundley no. and, and take his red shirt off. That's like they'd like to give him the, the free year, let him learn and watch. I don't think there's any question. He's the future here. Especially in this offense where he can really run with the ball. Things aren't there. He can take it down. Washington State's first possession of the second half starts in UCLA territory. And that's the first time that has occurred for the Cougars this evening. They've got it to the Bruin 41. They don't use the tight end much. Almost like a wing back in this offense. And after the play fake, pressure. It's up for grabs as it was one of the few times they got pressure on Lobestall as he hit at the end of the play going down. It'll bring up second and ten. First half numbers though and the possession chart for the Cougars. That's well, too many field goals. I mean you see three really good drives well put together driving in driven inside the red zone and yet we saw the two drops in the end zone by key receivers Wilson and Karstetter. Karstetter held without a catch in the first half. He's their leading receiver down here at the bottom on second and ten 
little bubble. They tried to get the screen and it's blown up. Coming up was Hester on the outside. Reddick, a quick recovery routine for UCLA. The first half leaders, as we saw Winston put down. And a loss of a couple of yards. Fernie with the field goals, accounting for all their points. And Kafusi, uh, he he was in on it. Seemed like more than four. Yeah. It, well, you know the thing is, is he's so reckless, and he's such a good hitter. I mean, he really runs through the ball carrier. Now can the Cougars get 13, 14 yards for a first down, and take advantage of the great field position to twist up front by UCLA. It's complete for Wilson. Will they get to the marker? No. Made the first one miss. Couldn't get away from Andrew Abbott, though. So Marquise Wilson did his best. Excellent tackling on the outside. Gang tackling. Abbott, Hester, they're all out there on the play. This this kid, this Wilson, is a burner now. Little stop route right here. Now, what can he do after the catch? Not bad by Tevin McDonald. who made him cut back, and here comes the pursuit. Now, interesting call. Yeah. Start of the set half and a fourth down gamble. Fourth and a little more than three. Trips on the wide side of the field looking in that direction. And the out is good. It's a first down. Pull it off on McDonald as the completion goes to Barton. Barton's had some big grabs for them. So a successful fourth down play. Well, I tell you, that's a clutch throw by Lobs Lobestall here. We got the slot receiver. It's the fourth catch right now for Barton. And they're working on the freshman McDonald, but look, good coverage. Just a great throw in the right spot. It's down to the UCLA 26. Galvin, man, making the most of it. When it almost looked busted, he's got a first down inside the 15. <laughs> hey, Joel, sometimes the quarterback makes the key throw on fourth down to keep the drive alive, and sometimes he makes the key block here as he hands off to Galvin. Watch him. Not the cleanest hand, but now look at that little key block right there. Nothing big, but again, that's Westgate. They can't really have use of the hand because it's broke. So back to back first downs. But give Galvin all the credit in the world. Ran up the back of his own blocker, but adjusted. Now Lobostal with Galvin again. He's got a nice lane over to the right side. Man, he's got five, making four inside the 11 to the 10. So Galvin, he's a package, isn't he? At 5'8", 170, the redshirt friend. He led the entire East Bay with 2,300 yards rushing. And you know what he's smart? He's hugging his right guard, B.J. Guerra. Fifth-year senior, open up that hole on the right side. Dan Spitz in for Wade Jacobson at right tackle tonight. Doing a pretty good job on the outside. Well, the red zone failures, the story right now for the Cougars, can they end that? It's a delay. Galvin's got some room. And that head on. He is pushed back, and what a job as he's pushed back by Dalton Hilliard, the strong safety. Yeah. And, you know, you can see the hitting is picking up here. You know, some real banging going on. It's, it's you know, Pac-12 game here. It is. There's Garris, 72. He's cutting right behind him. Gets a good shot on Westgate, and now here's the hit. Bam. That's the old Oklahoma drill right between the cones. <laughs> Me and you, Joel, going at her right ready. there. Get ready. Widen, Get your, widen your base. <laughs> <laughs> Inside a nine to play in third, third and four. No heat at all yet. Over the middle, it's there. Touchdown, Washington State. This time, Carr Stetter hangs on. What a throw by Lobestall between three Bruin defenders. And Carr Stetter, is he pumped or what? He dropped the one in the second quarter. And every receiver that drops a pass, they know their their game is on the hook. Going to come right into the middle. Just a little hookup right in the void. Excellent throw in anticipation by Lobestall. Great hands and immediately turns around and dives for the goal line for the touch. Fernie for the point after, and Washington State is back on top of UCLA. So a two-point lead again for the Cougars, this time at 16-14. Pass protection. Very important, and it pays off for the Cougars.
Coors Light says don't get flagged for breaking the law. It's a cold, hard fact. 21 means 21. So keep yourself and your friends in the game. Pass protection, exceptional for Washington State on that pass play for the touchdown to Karstetter. And then a zone package. We'll talk about that from UCLA. Intelligent read by Karstetter. Now, the short kick again. And will it head to the sideline? It will. Smith will take it on one hop. And he can't make a miss. Tried to run through it. And then put down. An outstanding play again on special teams by Sua. Here's the touchdown by Karstetter. He went in the tight slot here. And he's going to go right in the middle here. Right in the void of his own defense. And this is this play is made for him. He sits right down in the middle. Lobestall throws it away from Lowermore. Watch Lowermore. He's in zone defense right here, okay? Watch his eyes. Eyes, he sees the ball, but bam. The ball is in Karstetter's hands before. Can't get it quick enough. Anticipation, execution, excellent drive by the Cougars. UCLA's got it first and 10 at their own 28. It's Jonathan Franklin. Man bouncing to the outside. He shows some pretty good wheels. Good yardage. Out to close to the 35 for a gain of seven. So UCLA's lack of a rush, and they have very few sacks. The sack they had in the first half was only their coverage. fourth. That was a call coverage. Right. Uh, only their fourth sack so far this season. Remember I said on the bulletin board in the defensive line room at UCLA, it said minimize pass protection. Right now, Lorbostal getting too much time with the ball to be able to locate those receivers. Make it a gain of six for Jonathan Franklin. And Franklin looks like he's heating up, too. As he's chopped down, torpedoed about the 39. It was Dayon Buchanan coming up from the secondary to make the stop. So we've got eight plus minutes to go in the third, and UCLA playing catch up on their home field once again. But I don't think they should abandon the run. Though. Playing At catch all. up, you're down two. They got two good backs. They're heating up right now. I think they're they're winning the line of scrimmage in the run game. I think they got to stay with it right now. If anything, to take pressure off Prince. And when you get six on first down, I don't have to tell you, Brian. No. You better stay with the run game. One guy that they haven't thrown it all to is Fourier tonight. He's in there, man. Little dash on the handoff, barely tripping up, and Franklin knows that had the potential for a big play. He almost got to the next level. Gain of only four. It'll make it second and six. First and ten line brought to you by Russell Athletic. So UCLA comes in trying to get back to the 500 mark while Washington State is trying to make a statement. Now remember, they come in three and one as they're up by two, the midway point of the third quarter. Three wins matches their entire win total of the previous two seasons. That's how good their start has been. On second, and it's Prince calling his own number. Good play in the open field coming up. Uh, Tyree Toomer, the free safety. Man, he grew up right here in Southern California. Well, they got good speed. Good speed to the outside like that. You saw it from Toomer that time, chasing him down. So now you, you know you gotta put the ball in Prince's hands. And I, I mentioned Joe Faria. You know, like he's out there on the field. They haven't thrown to him once, Joel. He's 6'8. Caught two touchdown passes up at Palo Alto last Saturday night. And you gotta think, down the scene is an opportunity for him. You can't miss him. I think Washington State knows that he could be featured here. Well, let's see if they can use the middle of the field. They haven't gone there often. Prince, plenty of time. He's got him. And it's incomplete. And Fourier was wide open. It wasn't, it wasn't close. And Fourier thought he was held with no flag. Well, first of all, he's got to throw the ball up in the air for him to go get it. Make it catchable. But here, you know, here's Kalfusi here. He comes on the blitz, and there's a linebacker grabbing him. Got to get in the neighborhood. But you got to throw it up. Got to I mean, get it the in the neighborhood. The reason why six eight and why he's a target is you got to put it up in the air for him. Edie back deep once again with a fair catch and backpedaling. He'll get it at about the 17 yard line. So Washington State with the lead and the football. 
Well, you talked about getting Fourier involved. We talked about the mismatches with Jim Knox before the game and capitalizing on the size of it. UCLA has not been able to do that, though. Tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday, it's the Eagles looking to get back on track. They head to Buffalo. That's going to be tough. Ryan Fitzpatrick, back the Bills. They are a challenge now. So join us tomorrow. It all starts with the Built Ford to Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Check your local listings for the games in your area. And that Panther game in Carolina, watch out for Cam Newton. He is something special. Little bubble screen and Marquise Wilson belted, tried to turn it inside. Had a good play coming up for UCLA and making the most of the opportunity on the hit. It was Eric Kendricks. Well, you got to give these Bruin defenders a lot of credit because they're playing minus three starters in the secondary. Hester has been a monster back there. Probably the MVP right now defensively in this game so far. His defense has been on the field a lot. Given up a ton of first downs. But they have not given up but one touchdown tonight in four red zone drives. Now a little twist up front, but still time for Lovestell on the shadow cross. It's complete. And it's Barton. He's short of the first down at about the 23. And dropped there by Kendricks. Yeah, Kendricks has stepped in and played well. Weak side linebacker. Little crossing route here. Now that's what you got to do. You got to tackle the catch. Force a third down. Well, field position wise, very important for UCLA. It was a short field last time for Washington State, and they made the most of it. Down into the UCLA 41. He's got Winston in the backfield. And available is Karstetter. He's got a first down, and that was real simple. Driving it. Boy, yards after the catch. And that, the right in front of his own bench, that pumps everybody up. Yeah, he's an emotional player. You know, and he's he's your classic great hands. Everything is caught with his hands away from his body. Man, and now he tucks it away. Now he knows contact is coming. They're all grabbing for it. And he protects it well. It'll be Winston. Man, he's going nowhere. Good penetration on the run that time by UCLA. Yeah, I saw Donovan Carter, a backup defensive tackle in there, getting good penetration. There he is coming off the field. He's still running. You like the big guys hustling like that. Deserves a high five from somebody on the sideline. And with the tempo that Washington State is trying to play, you better run to the sideline. <laughs> the next play is coming. Too many men on the field. Yeah. Inside of four and counting left in the third. Good adjustment. And a nifty move by Galvin up to the 38-yard line to get the yardage back that was lost, plus about three more. But again, can UCLA get off the field? Yeah. Last week, Stanford was 10 of 14 on their third down conversions. No, you know, and, and we, we'll bring up the, the point again about what Paul Wolf wants to do. It's first downs, it's completions, and here it is, third down. Look, you'll give them the completion if you can tackle it before the sticks. There's only, I mean, everybody here is playing the sticks. One safety deeper than that. They're all up there now. Here comes some heat. Lobestall doesn't feel it from behind in the sack. UCLA finally gets to the quarterback. Lobestall, Damian Holmes, to the defensive end. Good hustle. Good hustle right there. They needed that. Damian Holmes, the junior, going to come around the corner here, working on the right tackle. Dan Spitz, good chase, though. Good chase all the way across the field. That's not easy to do when... The Cougars run as many plays as they do. Try to punt it away. It'll be taken on one hop by Taylor Embry. He's across the 30, and that is it to the 31. So good coverage downfield by the Cougars. UCLA back at their own 31. Our aerial coverage. Thank you, Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. And the pilot in charge, Matt St. John. Boy, he must enjoy it. Spirit of America, it's based right here. Down the 405, about a half hour south of the airport in Carson, California. So not a real long trip for Matt. Matt, thanks for the great shots tonight. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying the action as much as we are here. It's a two-point deficit for UCLA as they get the ball back. Give Washington State credit. They really dictated the tempo in the first half. Now lead it 16-14. Prince... Going deep. He's looking for Carroll. 
Carroll looked one way and it was over the other shoulder. And, and instead of the low percentage look, underneath Rosario was wide open. Well, you know, they went for the deep throw, but it was double covered. It was going to take a perfect throw, and you know, it's clear that Prince doesn't have the timing right now with Carroll. Good coverage that time. Picking up the free safety from the other side, taking the inside away, and Prince threw it to the outside. So a big long strike. A little bit like one of those Chase Utley strikes last night. Phillies against the Cardinals. Just don't take it straight away. Now, Jordan James on the little jet. Man, he's driven out of bounds with a defensive end on that side. Travis Long coming off a phenomenal game in the win at Colorado forces him out after a very short game. It, we talk to coaches and they say always well, when we talk to them early in the week we're going to take what they give us. Yeah. But you're talking about a deep throw into double coverage when Rosario's available underneath at 15 18 on a square. Out. It's decision making Joel you know take take the sure thing take the completion stay on the field right now. Now you're in a third and long. I would expect some kind of a blitz here from Washington State. I would put pressure on Prince right now make him throw the ball from a position he's not comfortable in. And these linebackers are good blitzes. Kafuzi, Mizell, here they come. You got it. They pick up the blitz. He's hit as he releases it. Rosario comes down with it. No. Knocked away at the last second. It was right in his hands and out. See? That's an outstanding job on the outside by Horton, who's already got a pick to. Yep. Here it is. That's the right spot. Oh, yeah. That's a great job by Horton. That's a way to finish. That's all you can do when you're six inches smaller than the wide receiver. You play for the finish. You play for the strip. And that's on Rosario to squeeze that ball so hard that you can't get it punched out. Edie waits for the punt. UCLA's Jeff Locke sends out a high one, a short one, though. And coming up, Edie let it hit. So we grabbed inside the 30 as Washington State is going to have it at the 28. Well, we talk about. The quarterbacks we've seen in the past, Washington State Cougars, and names you'll remember like Alex Brink and Gesser. Jack Thompson. They're throwing some on. Ryan Leaf. Second pick in the draft next to Peyton. Not too shabby Drew Bledsoe in his career in the NFL. No. Tim Rosenbach. I remember Tim Rosenbach in that big game in 88 back here. Mark Rippin. A Super Bowl winning yes. quarterback, Mark Rippin. Played with Mark at Towards the end of his career, he came to Philadelphia. Just a natural leader. It's a first down for the Cougars, trying to add to their lead now from their own 28-yard line. And a little gadget play. Edie comes back, and he's got an alley. He's pulled down Kendricks. Boy, a big play and a first down is denied by the hustle play of Eric Kendricks, who's just a freshman out of Fresno. And he's forced into action because we've seen it tonight, Sean Westgate. The senior's got a broken hand. He's not as effective. So he's getting a lot more snaps. And that's a good play of staying home right there and being disciplined. That's only a gain of four. It looked like a lot more, didn't it? Yeah, especially with the punt return with the ball in his hands. Far cry from last year for UCLA when they ran for better than 400. Well, they're denying the run on that play as they put down Carl Winston yeah. after a gain of maybe a yard. You know, you've mentioned a couple of times tonight, Joel, you know, Washington State's lack of success in the Pac-12 here, Pac-10 before this year, over the last couple of years. But you can see this is an improved club from past years. All the way around, they're a better football team. And, and Paul Wolf knows the culture. He yeah. played there. Yeah. He, he was here in 88 when UCLA was number one. And the Cougars came up with that upset. It's third and about four. And a little turn in. Marquise Wilson. When in need, they go to their, their money guy. You know that that moves the sticks that keeps the clock moving will maybe get a, a playoff here before the end of the third quarter but they have yet to go deep to Wilson and that's really the strength of him being able to run by defenses setting it up yeah for the fourth saving the best for last potentially and that's going to be the final snap of the third for Paul Wolf and the Cougars and they are moving once again as you can tell by the expression on his face the confidence in that huddle. So we're through 45 minutes of play at the Rose Bowl and the Cougars trying to pull it off. They lead by 2-16-14. You're watching Pac-12 College Football Saturday presented by KFC.
We're ready for the bratwurst. We're ready for those yeah, Polish sausages. Mm. And we get started in the fourth at the Rose Bowl. Joel Myers, Brian Baldinger, and Jim Knox. Time of possession, 28 minutes for Washington State, 17 for UCLA over the first 45 of this game. And that is always one of the most misleading stats in football, especially with tempo offenses. It's a first down for the Cougars on the first snap of the fourth. They've got it at their own 42, up by two. Ton of time for Lobosell, and that throw not even catchable. It's thrown out of bounds. They rode Marquise Wilson out of bounds. Hester working against him. Well, it's an uncatchable ball now. The ball was way out of bounds. And they're going to say. Best interference on the defense, number 21. 15 yard penalty, automatic for down. Now, where did the ball land? Did it land in bounds? Right. Okay, so right. it was Let's, catchable okay. potentially. Yep. Hester's played great. There's the there's the arm bar. That's the that's yeah. The, that's yeah, yeah. No, good that's, call. Good call. Because that was an arm bar. He's restricting Wilson from getting to the ball. Now he's done a good job of widening him, but uh, that's the right call. And he rode him the whole time. Well with the ball into the air and Hester's been good tonight, but that one Wilson was trying to get by him They're trying to streak him down the sideline and that arm bar is a way to kind of restrict that receiver from getting by him. So the fifth penalty on UCLA is Washington State at 10 for 125 There's going to be a false start 10 for 125 Washington State give them credit false start on the offense, number 72, five-yard penalty, still first down. And I say give them credit. It's only the third penalty of the night. They're not beating themselves, at least. Now, I'll tell you, go back to that Wilson. He makes you time to take a big gulp every time he gets in that sprinter stance and he starts coming at you. Because the last thing you want to do is give up the big, easy score right here. And that's what he's capable of doing. 63-yarder in Boulder last Saturday to get the Cougars the win. And he's only 19 years old. He's young. Honorable man in all conference last year as a true freshman. Good cut. Galvin gets the yardage back, taking it inside the 42 down to the 41. A gain of six. Try to catch him. He's small and he's quick. Well, I tell you, any kid out there, high school, Pop Warner, 5'8", is as tall as, as, as you're going to get. You're vertically challenged. Look at a kid like Ricky Galvin. They're all over the place. In football, there's a place for those guys that are tough, shifty, you know, can catch the ball out of the backfield. Size doesn't matter at that position. And, and they get lost in the crowd easily. Yeah, you can't see him. Look at Darren Sproles, what he's doing in New Orleans. Second and nine, Galvin again, and a bolt and a burst, and he's close to the first down. He's short, it looks like, by about a half a yard. But give the offensive line yeah. credit, too. Take a look at Fullington and Getz here, the senior. Center right here, along with... Fullington looking nice fold block that time gets comes around good peel block there good blocking combination inside you get the the guard blocking down in the nose you get the center pulling around and Galvin hiding behind the two of them. third the yard Lobostal the inverted wishbone here yep we saw it one earlier in this they won't need to go for it on fourth this time so the momentum belonging to the Cougars of Washington State easily with the first down and that offensive line that was just driving UCLA back. Unfortunately, one of the Bruins getting up Gimpy and he's been hurt before Dalton Hilliard. Yeah. Boy, that's secondary. It was so experienced when they were healthy. 77 combined starts and one by one they just keep going down. They can't keep them. Healthy in the back end of this defense. You know, one of their best, if not their best cover corner, Sheldon Price has been out these last two games. And they don't know with a sprained MCL if he's going to be able to make it back in the next week or two. His father, Dennis, played at a high level for UCLA from 84 to 87. Jim Knox. Joe Dalton Hilliard, it's just a cramp. He'll be back in. But, you know, you look at this UCLA defense, and I was looking at these guys on the bench. They, they're really gassed right now. Washington State's been on those nice long drives. Also, UCLA's offense, they have not been able to sustain a drive. They's, they've been out there a long time. You're going to start getting cramps now. Also, this team is really gassed, the UCLA defense. Now, thanks, Jim. UCLA, or Washington State cannot afford to settle for a field goal, though. No. Well, that's been their problem tonight. Off the play, big. Lobostal on a double move going into the corner and out of bounds. He wanted Carstetter. 
So it's picked up by Andrew Abbott. He's out of bounds. Good coverage. Pretty good coverage right here. Wow, what a one hit catch by Abbott. <laughs> out of bounds, but that ball's got to be, you know, you give Carstetter a chance. You know, you throw the ball out of bounds, you don't give your receiver any kind of opportunity. Kind of interesting call because they had really run the ball with Galvin very, very well. 22 more snaps for Washington State. First downs, completions, stay on the field. And I think Jim is, is right. I think UCLA with the injuries, they're lacking some depth. Lobestall gets him in a position. And they're running Galvin, who's spinning and takes a shot out of the secondary. Fortunately, it was a guy not much bigger than him that applied the hit as he was popped on the spin. But he still got good yardage, about seven. And it was McKay. Well, you know, they're running to the right side behind B.J. Guerra. That time they loaded up uh, with some extra blockers on the right side. And Galvin here, a good second half running the football. Four call it. A long three. Pocket holding up. Now the heat comes. He can run for it. Instead, he'll throw for it. And it should go into the goal. A touchdown. It will. Wide open. What a read. Ricky Galvin. Touchdown to Washington State. Give Lobostall credit with his patience. Joel, he, he climbed the pocket here. Excellent job of not panicking. With pressure coming around you, he stepped up. Watch him now. Nice job. Just five linemen right here, five on four up front. Now, this is the check down here. He knows where Galvin is. He's sneaking out of the backfield. UCLA had all come together to try to stop Lobestall, and Galvin on the outside is wide open. Excellent play by the fifth-year senior, Lobestall. Extra point is blocked. It stays an eight-point game. So Fernie had missed one extra point prior to the matchup tonight at the Rose Bowl. But Galvin coming through on the reception. Was it low? Yes, very low. And UCLA gets a break. The Cougars doing everything quickly tonight, and they kicked it off. Just a second ago, as Smith brought it back with a great field position now for UCLA, and they're going to have it. The Bruins at their own 37-yard line, but the Cougars plenty to celebrate. Now, the extra points have killed UCLA over the last few weeks, their entire kicking game. Is that going to be a break for them the other way now? After the blocked extra point, it's going to be a timeout called. Timeout. UCLA, timeout number two. So they've only got one timeout left, so a premium on the snaps coming up on this drive. Down by eight with 12-16 to play. They'll get it together. We'll all get it together when we come back to the Rose Bowl. UCLA has the ball, but they've only got one timeout left here in the fourth quarter. Time for our Toyota playbook as we look at the cool customer, Marshall Lobestall. Well, you know, he is cool because he's going to see his running back come out of the backfield, Ricky Galvin, when this play, Galvin's going to come out of the backfield here as his check down receiver. So when he climbs the pocket here, you're going to see he's going to avoid the rush, step up into it. Now, you come out here, and here's Galvin on the outside. That's what you call the check down. He knows where all the receivers are deployed. Excellent job of knowing where his safety valve was. And it got him to the end zone, got him the lead as well. UCLA's got a first down. After the kick return out to the 37-yard line by Josh Smith. Let's see if they get Fourier some touches. It'll be Prince on the outside. And Fourier was over there trying to apply a block. He gets about four on first down. So we're three minutes into the fourth, and, and I brought it up before. The extra points that have plagued UCLA. Now, is it a bonus what just happened? And the block by their big defensive lineman, Odigi Zuwa, for Rick Neuheisel to keep it an eight-point game. Yeah, and a one-score game. Touchdown, two-point conversion. They can tie it up. It'll be second and six. Jonathan Franklin and Franklin into the secondary one man who's got an angle and he's knocked out of bounds saving the touchdown Tyree Tuma the free safety so 
did they get away from that? Because let's face it, UCLA threw the ball in the first half more than they ran it, it seemed. Uh, I mean, this is a kid that you know, he follows Mayava, the center around again, that center pool, the lead. This kid just has a, a burst to him. Number of, you know, he had 30 carries for 216 yards last year right here against the Cougars. Like, you give me the ball, I can still get there. Over 100 yards there, I mean, He's almost 10 yards a carry right now. Why would you get away from him? He was 12 for 96 yards last week at Stanford. He was fifth last season of the conference in rushing. Wide snap, good grab by Prince, and he's got room to run. He's got to watch out for the umpire, and he's got a first and goal at the nine. <laughs> the umpire just tried to get out of the way. Yeah, well, we're already down one official, right? <laughs> the back judge is out doing this game with six officials How about tonight. the one-handed grab, Ryan? Yeah, well, there's a little, little bad snap that time. He saved it. But I think he sees this. I think he sees all these drops here. He sees a little room underneath to take off and run. And really, you know, he has that green light to go when the lanes are there. And that's why the staff wanted him to succeed so much because of what we just saw. Mm -hmm. He can run the football. So first and goal UCLA. Now Prince on a waggle. Corner. Touchdown. Josh Smith. Got to go for two here, right? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, go go tie this up. Well, we've liked Tyler Gonzalez. Don't get us wrong. But <laughs> yes, the former no. soccer manager. Ah, this is a smart play here. But excellent drive by Prince. Running it, throwing it, completing that touchdown here. We said that this was going to be a matchup. One-on-one, -on -one, this nice play. Nice play against man coverage, what you call a man beater. That wasn't a pick. It's just called a run. Kind of just rubbing off each other there. Sure. Nothing illegal about that. Good, good, good play against predictable man coverage. First touchdown of the season for Josh Smith. Now Coleman's in the backfield. Prince trying to get two. And jump ball. Rosario had it knocked away. That was Horton, and Horton's had some kind of night on the defensive coverage. So the Bruins get back at least within striking distance inside. Of 11 minutes to play. <laughs> Pac-12 College Football Saturday presented by KFC Popcorn Chicken. Today tastes so good. And brought to you in part by Russell Athletic, who reminds you that together we are. And tonight at the Rose Bowl, we are in a tight one. UCLA and Washington State. Bruin fans ready. Brian Baldinger and Jim Knox are. I know that much. With 10.52 to play. It's a 22 to 20 lead and the difference in the game don't forget yep. there were field goal that was no good at least the first attempt they said UCLA was climbing on the back of another player one of their own to get up to force the miss. We looked at it we didn't see a lot of climbing in fact we didn't find any but let's see if that is going to prevail as the difference in this contest. That C can't be turned around from the camera I mean you can see the full four letters of the Bruins. When we're on him. Mason after it, it was off his fingertips, and now after indecision, he's bringing it out, and it's going to cost him. His first return of the night, Marcus Mason, out to the 12, and that is it. Bail our Pac-12 stars of today. What outstanding performances! LaMichael James with the injured arm. Now he said he's going to be able to play next week already. Okay. He said he's been through that. Oswater, Arizona State, York of Oregon State, and Andrew Luck. What a shot, Andrew Luck. A Heisman Trophy candidate, runner-up last year, and as far as I'm concerned, the leader for the Heisman right now. I know it's early, but he just puts his teammates in positions to succeed. He does an awful lot of things besides just throw the football for a lot of yards. It's from the 12, Lobo Stahl, with Carl Winston on the carry, and Carl Winston lugging it out for us down. That's breathing room. 10 on the carry. For five foot eight, Carl Winston. Well, Andrew Luck last week. Well, he can do everything. Well, you want him to catch the ball as well? Yeah. He will from Drew Tyrell. The old throwback. How about the one handed catch? Foot in bounds. Big play leading to one of their early touchdowns against the Bruins last week. They're going to call it second and inches. And put him down outside of the 21, needs the 22. Well, he's got the 22, and he's got the 25 and 26. So first down, Washington State. 
I'd say the big surprise in this game for me today is the play of the Cougars offensive yes. line. Uh, Galvin has had a good day. Uh, Lobestall has been protected well. Uh, they've had plenty of time to operate. Now they haven't been good in the red zone and that's why they only have 22 points here. But they have controlled the line of scrimmage today. And they've pulled a number of, of their whether it's a guard or a tackle. Here's Galvin reversing his field. And a lot of running for about two yards out to the 29. But back to your point, the biggest guy, and we have spotlighted him at the top of the telecast, B.J. Guerra, four-year starter, the senior at 6'3", 320. Otherwise, most of these guys below 300, very athletic, and they utilize him that way. Well, they get him to the perimeter. Exactly right, Joel. They move him, they pull him, they get him outside in space, and then Galvin, who's, you know, so shifty and small, especially when he crouched down. He's a difficult guy to see. Remember UCLA with only one timeout left in the game. Nine and a half to play, and they're down by two. It's a second and long. Man, on the back. And it's the guy who blocked it, Odigi yeah. Zuwa. He blocked the extra point. He gets the stop from behind Carl Winston on the backside pressure. See, I thought Galvin missed that hole that time. I thought the hole was right over the left guard, Fullington. He ran into the back of the center, sets up a big third down, and the Bruin fans know all about when to make some noise here. There you go. Washington State has converted just about every big third down they've needed tonight. They need seven to get it across the 37. Show the blitz. It's picked up. Lobostal, plenty of time, though, in the gun. Barton's got it, and he's got a first down. Good adjustment. He had to stop and turn back. Isaiah Barton, who was knocked out of the game earlier, has come back successfully. Oh, he's been huge. And this play, three receivers over here to the right side. Barton is the middle receiver. Little out and up route. Look at that throw. That throw sandwiched between three Bruin defenders away from him to the back shoulder. Couldn't have been thrown any better by Lobestall. Westchester High School has turned out so many good basketball players from their program. And that's just north of the airport here in Los Angeles. Well, they've got some pretty good football players, too, like Isaiah Barton. First down outside of the 48. Little twist up the middle. Man, it's Marquise Wilson with a cushion on Hester. And he's down with a gain of eight, almost nine. It's been a good matchup today. Hester and Marquise Wilson battling all day long. So a couple plays in the end zone between the two. Hester's done a good job of limiting the big play to Wilson. Kid that's averaging over 22 yards a catch this season. It'll be second in less than two. And Lobostal throwing it out on the little kick out screen. And it's complete for the first down. And that's Bobby Ratliff, another true, a redshirt freshman, rather, from here in Southern California. They utilize, in fact, the first two games, they went to 11 different receivers. I tell you, on third and, on a, with two yards to go, this is kind of a gutsy throw all the way across the field. But excellent block on the outside by Barton, freeing Ratliff up to get the first down. And pretty close to a lateral. <laughs> so if it's yeah. put on the ground, well, that's true. It's that question. Yes. It drives alive and well, seven and a half to play. And the clock working against UCLA with only one timeout on the board. Adjustment by the big guy. And that is Mitz at 6'1", 225. He stands out with the other two backs at 5'8". And if they list him at 5'8", you know they're 5'6", or 5'7". <laughs> hey. That's a given. Yeah. Everybody's fighting for those inches, you aren't got they? It. Yes. Now second and eight from the UCLA 30. UCLA needs to hold him to the bare minimum three. Yes. They're taking a lot of time now. They're slowing the operation down. Don't blame them. Trying to take the air out of the ball and shorten the game. Lobestall, plenty of time. And on the deflection incomplete. Carstetter had it go off his fingertips for the second time tonight. Tevin McDonald couldn't get his hands under it in time. Boy, what an opportunity for the Bruins. A tip pass in the middle. Really uncharacter. Well, that ball's behind. Way Carstetter. behind. Yeah, that's behind him. But McDonald diving furiously to try to get his hands under that ball and stop this drive with the turnover. So now another third down. And they have been magic on third down tonight. They've converted on fourth down, too. You see how he's got to tighten their coverage here. They can't give him these eight yard stop routes. It's only a three man rush. Lobostall flushed out of the pocket, though. And they get him from behind. 
UCLA gets the sack. He is down at the 30. No fumble, and it's Dayton Jones. That's the second time today for Jones. They needed this from him. Good coverage. They tighten up the coverage, and so Lobestall here going to try and do something with his legs here. This is where they miss Jeff Toole, but nice hustle by Jones getting him down and forcing a pretty long field goal. It's going to be a 47-yarder. A long 51 last year for Fernie. His last try, don't forget, an extra point that was low. So he's yet to miss a field goal this season. He's 8 of 8 to put them up by 5. It's got the direction, and it's got the distance by a couple of yards. Fernie comes through. It just barely cleared the crossbar. And it's a 25 to 20 lead. Time into the field with 5.49 to play. So Fernie is still perfect on the night and the season for Washington State. Inside of six left in regulation with Washington State. Try to win on the road in conference play again. They've been rarities over the last three plus seasons. The field goal by Fernie. A good one by the holder. Dan Wagner, the putter, brought it back. Oh, yeah. A couple of yards. Yeah, he cleared it okay. Probably could have made that from 50. He's been clutch, though. What a game today. Yeah, he's pacing now. He can afford to pace. Yes, he can. <laughs> he's four he's for four. for high fives. Here, he's Joel. four for four. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Now, Joel, this is really UCLA's game to win. You need a touchdown to win the game. You've got, all right, you've got one timeout, but look, you've got plenty of time. You've gotten a couple of good kickoff returns here. New Highs will give Kevin Prince a couple of last minute instructions, but they've run the ball well here in the second half. Can't get away from that. You don't need to put it up right away. You don't. I mean, you, you have to execute your best drive of the year right now. That's what's on the line. A Pac 10 game. The Cougars trying to get to four and one, trying to get their second Pac-10 win on the road, back-to-back -back weeks at Colorado last week, trying to come to Pasadena to win. Now Alex Goffer is going to kick it away. The junior from Spokane who walked on in 2009. Fernie has been short with the kickoffs tonight. This is going to be Alex Goffer. And let's see what he can do. So he tees it up and hits it from the 30. Short over to the far side at the 12, Josh Smith. They pin him to the boundary and a good open field tackle. Got our Coors Light freeze cam. And it's on Carstead to the wide receiver. A little zone read and sitting down in it. Yeah, just beat Larimore there. You see the concentration, the focus, just looking that ball right in and then the emotion that a senior will have. Every one of these games, you know, one less game that you got in your career, you want to make them all count. Now longer field thanks to the play of Cyrus Cohn. The linebacker made the stop on special teams. Jonathan Franklin looking for a hole and pounds it for about three. Well, that's Kalfuzi again at the bottom of that. Really active today. Five-point ball game. Look Washington State has controlled the play. They've got, well, before that snap, it was 29 more snaps than UCLA. Either way, but I mean, they have failed in the red zone and that's and the, that's the one thing that's kept UCLA around and, that, and that's why right now this drive is the most important drive of the season second and seven and Prince wants to throw down the middle looking for Rosario he's there he's got it dragged from behind at the 20 the 15 and it's first and goal UCLA one-handed grab, Nelson Rosario. And you can't miss the post into the middle of the field. Perfectly thrown by Prince. The senior Rosario sticks out the big ball. They said they got to beat man coverage. And there they are. That's Horton there. This post, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That goes on the highlight reel. Nice job. That's the second big throw by Prince to Rosario today. The first one led to a one-yard Coleman touchdown. Now UCLA trying to regain the lead. They've had it briefly tonight. Coleman is in the backfield. Jordan James, the Jet, gets it. 
And on a tight one, is spun out of bounds. Great pursuit from behind. And we've been talking about the linebackers all night long. And the linebacker came through there once again. Mizell, C.J. Mizell out of Redmond, Washington. And the good news for the Cougars, he's only a sophomore. Yeah. yeah he's, you know, he, he originally went to Florida State. Things didn't work out. Came back here. Was really elected the captain of the team last year. Only his third game. But really a kid that has a bright future. And that jet option hasn't gained six inches tonight. And, and believe it or not, the naked bootleg was there yeah, well. <laughs> for Prince. It'll be second and goal. Grant Coleman belting it straight up. Now this is four down territory for UCLA. They don't, because of the one time out on the board. He's down and ball was already down yeah. and he was down at about the seven maybe the six. Now Faria doesn't have a catch here tonight. You're third down you're inside the ten. It just seems like that's a guy you have to throw the ball up to. Caught two touchdown passes last week. I think he's got good hands but the ball's got to be thrown up. You know, I watched Calvin Johnson for the Detroit Lions jump up in triple coverage last week, rip one down from the Cowboys. Play the game for UCLA. Oh, they're, all point, they're pointing to him. They know. Prince, here comes the blitz. Littles turn in. Wide open. Touchdown, UCLA. Shaq Evans belted still down, but gives the Bruins the lead. Now, they should go for two. Take this lead yes. up to three. This is a great little pick play here on the outside. Man coverage. You call a man beater. Perfectly thrown and led by Prince. Washed and out Prince, Simmons. Yeah, it was. And tell you, Prince was fantastic on that drive. They needed him to be clutch. He got the big play. Engineered that drive. The, the touchdown throw was well thrown. That's the drive that the Bruins needed. Nice call by Mike Johnson, the offensive coordinator here. Look at, this. Look at the anticipation. Prince gets this ball out quickly. On the move. Shaq Evans here. Tough collision. Yeah. Now the two-point conversion attempt coming up for UCLA, who leads by one. 326 to play. Washington State, though, in good shape with all three of their timeouts remaining. This is a huge play for both teams here. As Washington State can stop this two-point conversion. They're a field goal away. That's all they need. Their kicker is four for four tonight. Prince gets him up with Coleman and Jordan James in the backfield. Pop over the middle. He's got Rosario. Oh, it's good. Wow. Nelson Rosario on a jump ball. He took it away from Horton, and UCLA leads by three. We said from the very beginning, how are they going to handle the big receivers on defense tonight? have not been large and they haven't lasted long for UCLA but they're up by three now as the kick goes deep and right past Barton out of the end zone so Jeff Locke needed one and he got one and it's a long field for Washington State but don't forget Lobestall has done whatever he's wanted to tonight he's been that efficient as he brings the offense back on the field and all they need is three well here's the touchdown that by Shaq Evans well here's the two-point conversion by to Rosario you can see just throwing it up above him you can see just the size advantage on the outside over Horton Boy, Prince has come off the bench after the injury today and played really really well now it's up to the UCLA defense and they have not been able to consistently get pressure on Lobostal 326 remaining he's got time and he's wide of Barton Barton was available working on the outside. He was going and it was Westgate out there trying to track him, believe it or not. And that's one of the few throws that Lobestall has missed today. I mean, he's really been accurate, especially on those to the sideline. And he starts this drive 23 of 31 for 182 yards. And, and check that. That was the prior possession, but he's been that efficient with two touchdown tosses. He's got a second and ten. 
The out's a good one. And Marquise Wilson has a first down in front of Hester at the 31. Well timed. See, and, and that's the throw that he just missed to the other side. But, you know, on a diagonal, on a rope right there to Wilson, first down, they move the chains. You know, I mean, it's about first downs. It's about completions. They don't have to rush it. They don't need the big play. They don't have to force anything. He's got Winston in the backfield. And Winston's got a nice alley over the left side. Make it Galvin. And he's got a first down, moving the chains past the 41 to the 42. So Ricky Galvin picking up the pace. How? And it looks pretty easy right now for Washington State inside of three to play. And you wonder with this up-tempo offense, the number of plays approaching 80 right now by Washington State, how much this has worn down the Bruins throughout the course of the game. Off the play fake. Here comes the heat. He gets popped. And it will fall incomplete. That was a hit again. And, and we've seen the pressure coming from Odigizuwa. A couple big plays by him here in the fourth quarter. First and ten line brought to you by Russell Athletic. And now it's a second and long. Second and ten for Lobostal. They don't have to give up on the run. What we saw from Galvin the last time. No, because UCLA is playing both safeties deep here. So they're defending the run right now with just really five players right up the middle. Lobestall going to the outside. It's complete and a good open field tackle by McDonald, the freshman we've been talking about on Isaiah Barton. Right. So yes. here's the third down. UCLA has not been able to come up with. Joe, and as soon as that ball, as soon as McDonald made that tackle, four new defensive players came on for the Bruins. Almost like a hockey right. you know, change ball. coming over the boards. A new line on this shift. Galvin's in the backfield. Third and about five and a half, almost six. You see the timeout situation plenty up there. Plenty of time for Lobostall. Now he's flushed out. Can he make the play on the run? It's intercepted. Picked off. Do you believe it? Andrew Evans got it. <laughs> the one mistake that Lobostall has made today because of a three-man pressure by the Bruins what a play by Abbott getting a chance to play because of the injury to Sheldon Price. Here comes the, the rush. I'm not sure where Lobestall was throwing that one. Well, he thought his receiver was turning out. Isaiah Barton, and he yeah. went in. Yeah. The so one. now can UCLA run out the clock? Three timeouts on the board still. Yeah. The depressing sight of Lobestall, who's not made a mistake tonight, as you mentioned. Really? And then the other extreme with Andrew Abbott. And the opportunity to play because of the injury to Sheldon Price. First turnover of the game. I mean, been really well played. Now the running game for UCLA. It's Franklin, or make it Coleman. And he battles for two down to the 49. Washington State stops it. First yep. time out, minute 53 to play. It's a lot of time. Can UCLA, though, pick up at least one first down? Well, that's what it's going to take. Yeah, one first down. Now, Washington State, don't forget they were in this position last week against Colorado. Yep. And, and it was 2.38 left. Ball went back to Colorado. And even after a pass interference call that went against them, they got the stop they needed to get the ball back. Our sprint unlimited update and a look back on the scores of this contest. There's the big play to Galvin, though. A little check down on the outside. Smart play by Lobestall. Here's Prince throwing this one to Josh Smith on the outside. And this one here to Shaq Evans. Got the two-point conversion to Rosario. And the Bruins are here with a three-point lead and the ball. Got a second and eight. Run Carroll. Now shifting in the backfield, Coleman lugs his way. Short of the first down by a pop three. His knee went down. His body's up to the 42. His knee went down to the 44. And the Cougars use their second time out. So this is the second consecutive week, the situation arises for Paul Wolf. They just have to get the stop and a punt. Well, they got the stop last week, and then they got the 63-yard bomb to Marquise Wilson. 
look into the Pac-12 standing. Stanford 5 and 0. Oh. One of the best teams in the nation. Washington 4 and 1 doing well up in the Northwest. Oregon their only loss obviously. And you saw that at the start of the season. And then Arizona State 3 and 0 oh for Dennis Erickson in conference play. USC what a game it'll be with Cal on Thursday night and UCLA trying to just get back to 500 overall. It's almost like two games when you have to play at home in conference play. You better defend it. Yeah, you got to defend it. You've got to win it. You've got to get your second Pac-12 win, and it's all there for them. I mean, you look at this situation. You coach situations. All right, it's under two minutes. Washington State has one timeout left. You need a you need a first down here to basically win this game. They might was have there, defensive yeah. offside. Was there movement up front and contact? Now Washington State is saying there was movement on the right side of the offensive line. This could decide game if it goes against Washington State. Ball start on the offense number 64. Five yard penalty still third down. So. They're going to say it was up early for Greg Capella or the right guard. You see if he flinches. Uh, he put his hand on his helmet. So the defender was in the neutral zone and Capella reached out to touch the helmet thinking he was going to kill the play. So now third and eight. And what this does is really forces UCLA to throw the football here. And if it's an incomplete, it stops the clock. And the time out is saved. Yeah. Minute 47. Left in regulation. Are they forced to throw the football, though? Yes. Prince. He's got him available. Josh Smith hangs on. It's complete inside the 40. Wow. Not many touches for Smith offensively tonight. But that was clutch. Boy, I tell you, Kevin. Prince threw a beautiful pass. Play action. Stops, sets his feet. Look at that ball. I mean, it was, it just beat the hit by DeMonte Horton on the outside. And Smith did a great job of holding on to it. They got their first down now. Look at Prince. He, he feels pretty good, doesn't he? I mean, a guy that was sort of maligned here after that performance against Texas. And came they, in. don't forget about the interception tonight at the end of the half. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people were mumbling going into the locker room at halftime. Takes a knee. Now Washington State will use their final timeout. Little bull rush from <laughs> it was my cell, and you can't blame. Also, Alex Hoffman Ellis, they're frustrated. Well, the college football season, Fox Sports is proud to support Dream Foundation. We're making dreams come true for adults facing a life-threatening illness. There's no greater time to help those who need than when time is limited. Text DREAM to 41518 to donate $10 right now and turn dreams into lasting memories. Joe, we said it early in this game that Washington State had opportunities, a lot of opportunities that first half. They, they missed their touchdown opportunities, a couple drops in the end zone. They settled for field goals. And that's really the difference here right now. Well, their failure in the red zone is the reason. That's it. They're on the wrong side of the scoreboard tonight. They played a heck football game. And that is going to do it. And now they finally stop it. They'll use their final timeout here with 23 seconds remaining. So one more snap and a knee by Prince, and UCLA escapes. And the big play down the stretch, Nelson Rosario's one-handed catch. And then, call it a pick if you like, Shaq Evans, and hopefully he's okay because he took a pop on the knee. And then the two-point conversion to make it a three-point lead for UCLA. You know, Washington State is out of timeouts. You know, I just speaking with Rick Neuheisel for a while yesterday over at the football offices, he, you know, I mean, on the scoreboard, it looked like Stanford just steamrolled it. But there were opportunities in that game, the opening drive, they fumbled, you know, a couple turnovers that Stanford got a short field on. But he doesn't think the talent at the skilled position is that far away. And today, that skilled positions really helped them. Whether it was Franklin running the ball, whether it was Rosario on the outside, Shaq Evans, they made a lot of big plays here in the second half. Yeah, you talk about the two turnovers. That was 14 points yep. against a quality team. Short fields of 28 and 43 yards last week. The two missed extra points. It could have been a ball game. It could have been 31-21 early in the second half. But they missed an extra point, the momentum, and there it is. It's over now. 
So UCLA comes from behind. They were an interesting proposition, and especially when Brijo went down, and the center is upset because they bull rushed him. Mayava, a very good center. Good game. Yep. Good game, getting out in the perimeter, protecting yep. the quarterback. And Rick Neuheisel very alertly went over to him to move him away. Right. Paul Wolf, Rick Neuheisel, get together at midfield. Man, what a battle. Back and forth, but the failure in the red zone of Washington State, the difference in this game. At every level right now, Joel, you've got to have a separate offense between the 20s and one there in the red zone. Offense and defense, it decides most games at most levels right now. Next Saturday, FX Game of the Week, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific Theater. Matching up with number 25, Texas A&M, a winner earlier tonight over Texas Tech. Now for Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox, our entire crew. I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. UCLA hangs on, prevails, comes from behind, and beats Washington State 28-25. You've been watching Pac-12 College Football Saturday, presented by KFC. So long, everybody, from Pasadena.